Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 131 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And you know, allegedly, I'm Sarah. Not sick anymore. Asterix. Nope. You sound amazing, by Katie the way. Is Can that's I just bring me? back your old voice katie <coughs> listen I, will say, I do think this is like the first this hold on i can't talk anymore well did i ever be was i ever able to talk no this is the first time in probably podcasts that i've been able to not sound awful yeah it's been a minute hasn't it yeah um in this semi-healthy episode is sponsored by <laughs> libby ryan thank you libby thank libby, libby. Today we will be discussing chapter seven, so magical, of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the Ministry of Magic. So make sure you've read that chapter and you're ready to tread your way through the details. And we ha- there's a lot happening. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of weekly profit. <laughs> it's well, it's just like short things. Let's go. Part. Let's go. So the first thing is, I found this really. I saw this really cool thing that popped up on Facebook today about a Napa Valley wine train murder mystery. That's um, a mouthful. That is a lot. I know. If I lived nearby Napa Valley, I would totally do this. It looks really awesome. I mean, we could potentially go there for a weekend. Okay, I am not <laughs> doing... <laughs> I will say like two weeks later, because isn't it like in October, like the 17th and something? Yes. We're already gone. No, we're not gone for the 17th. <sighs> See? You don't have... I would love to go. Yeah. It's the 17th and the 24th. Look, two so opportunities. Yeah. So anyway, October 17th and October 24th is what they're calling their Wizards and Witches um, murder mystery. So it is real expensive, though. Mm. It is $290. Per ticket? Per person. Goodness gracious. I think think their normal one is also, like, not cheap. You know what I mean? That's really expensive. But I think you get, like, a lot of wine and you go... I mean, I... It's beautiful there. Like, yeah. it's just yeah, gorgeous. So you're paying for the view. You're paying for the ride. You're paying hefty. for the wine. Yes. But if you're into that. Do you get food? Yes. Yeah, I don't dinner. know. I've never been on it. Isn't it? It's a dinner, right? Um, I don't know. Listen, if they're not giving you dinner for $290, man, yeah, I'm telling you what. I agree with you. Well, oh, how long is it? The three-hour evening trip will come with a three-course dinner oh, yeah. crafted by executive That's... chef Donald Young. And yeah, a Donald! Side, and a side of murder. You're also... Oh. You're also <laughs> I'd I like my murder maybe rare, maybe. please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, you're also encouraged to dress according to the ride's theme. So well, anyway, I thought easy. that that seemed cool. Yeah, it's pretty so cool. people that are out in that area or if you're really into that thing and want to travel to it, it sounds cool. Um, also, I shared this in the Facebook group earlier today and was like so stoked, even though I was like, Psh, Dallas, not going to go there. But this is cool for people that are by Dallas. <laughs> so, <laughs> lo and behold, <laughs> Rupert Grint, Bonnie Wright. James and Oliver Phelps are all going to be at Fan Expo Dallas uh, in March. March, what are the dates? It's 27th, 28th, 20th, 28th. Yeah, 27th, 28th, 29th. All four of them will only be there on Saturday. Um, so that's cool. On top of the fact that Sarah, <laughs> Megan, and Katie are also going to be at Fan Expo <laughs> Dallas. On Saturday only. On Saturday. Oh, my God. Ooh. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is like this is like a lifetime dream coming true to be <laughs> able to like I need I need to know when these tickets to like get his autograph and photo are like going on sale because I need them. Oh he There's literally like, an email like you can uh, sign up for. Maybe. Rupert never does cons. I don't know why. He could make a killing from them. He should do them, but oh my god, Rupert Grant Someone in the chat said, do you think he'll bring his ice cream truck? And I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> you better ship that thing overseas. Yeah. No, I want to see his hoverboard. Oh I'm God. just <laughs> really too. excited to check off another state on my list. This will be three states this year so far that I have not been to that I'm checking off. That's awesome. I'm excited. I potentially might check off three this year as well. Yeah, Colorado. Yep. Texas. And yep. maybe Nevada for Vegas. We might, depending on flight prices yeah, yeah, and yeah. if they go down a little bit because they're really expensive. But yeah, gotta go to Vegas. It's a, I, here, Vegas I'm not fantastic. a gambler. 
It's great people watching. Mm. There's I just great go for food. food. Yeah. The food is so good. Hashtag um, go go. Oh, yeah. I really like there's a hot dog place at Container Park that I really, really like. Hot dogs are great. So um <laughs> anyway, I'm freaking out about Rupert Grant. I'm so excited. If anybody's gonna be in Dallas, totally like message us or something, or maybe we can set up like a little meet up in the expo since we're only really going to be there on saturday all day we're probably not really going to leave the con much so if you're coming to the con maybe we can like set up a a little meet up in there somewhere great idea. Mm-hmm. so like a lunchtime meet up or something yeah maybe a, something like that whatever we'll see how it goes but um or we might just you know do it in line while we're waiting to meet rupert yeah, I might be waiting all day, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan on meeting because it makes me very nervous. So if you want to just hang out with me, come find me and you can bring me snacks. I'm excited for you to go to a con that's not Leaky Con because they're very different than Leaky Con. Like Leaky Con is a beast in and of itself. Like it is so focused on Potter, which is awesome. But like all of the things that it offers is kind of more like a convention that you would go to like for work that you're like learning things whereas like this is just like fandom con you know Mm -hmm. what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's a very different type of feel they're both i mean they're both awesome in very different ways (laughs) whatever no look at vinny's comment oh um (laughs) (laughs) rupert was the wall he was the wall of hotness (laughs) What? I like oh my god like I wish that I had a picture of it because let me tell you that collection of Rupert Grant pictures that were on my wall from like probably from when I was 12 till I was like in college it was impressive my mom would get so mad at me because I'd go through ink in like a day I would just print pictures of Rupert oh, <laughs> you talk about the picture remember you printed out that story at mag's Oh my the God. Of the, I like, don't even know where it is. Lab. I lost it. But that was the one that someone found <laughs> for me. It was called The Price of Love. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember so being good. down there. Like, no one ever went down there. There was one class. I took the... The business class. I took the typing yeah. class that we had to take in the summer. Um, and that's where you would take it. Also, Business Club met down there. So I was down there, like, a lot because I was part of Business Club. And I would just hang um, out there and print. <laughs> she would print stuff out, like stacks <laughs> of pages like you know how just, colleges give uh, students uh, you, the ones that i've been to give students like you have a certain like number a, of pages uh-huh yeah she would have blown through that and all of them <laughs> being down there printing out her stories oh Vinny, i don't know if i can even promise anybody what i'm gonna say to him when i meet him she because probably won't say anything. <laughs> If it's anything, like when I met Taylor Swift, I'm literally just going to stare at his face. Or do you remember when you guys met Benji and Joel and neither one of you could talk to like the one that you I liked touched the most? Benji's hand. That is how <laughs> awkward I was. He was signing my poster and I reached out and I just Are touched his hand and I was like, she's serious. Uh, oh, you creep. <laughs> he just like all of his tattoos were there and they just looked so pretty and I just wanted to touch them. It reminds me of Gilmore Girls when Lane like runs her hands through some boy's hair and then she realized she does it and she's like, she runs <laughs> yeah yeah that is literally yeah I, awkward turtle that was bad and then of course we get in front of joel and katie's frozen and i'm just like chit-chatting away to joel because i don't care <laughs> benji totally frozen taylor frozen but i, I mean frozen melted <laughs> olaf <laughs> i did tell her about my cats so i guess there's that I don't you know what I'm hear gonna, the story. I don't know what cat. I'm gonna say to Rupert. I, I don't know. You just cheesed at it the whole I time. just I I keep <laughs> putting my password into your iPad and it's driving me insane, oh, Tiffany. Well, maybe you shouldn't forget your things. All right, we should probably start. <laughs> yes. Okay. So then the other things that I just the other things I wanted to tell you guys is that um, I want to remind every because I think we said this in the last podcast that came out, but we will be at Wizardly World of Kent yes. at least positively three of us. Hopefully, Sarah can come as well. Mm-hmm. But for sure. We will have a presence there. We will be a part of it. It is on July 25th in Kent. If anybody has any questions, I pinned a post where people were asking questions about it on our page. And um, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment on there. And then one of us will answer it or other people who have gone will answer it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's really helpful. And then you can always message us if you have questions. The Kent State Hotel is a really popular place to stay. You can stay someplace in Streetsboro if you're looking for other places to look at. That's not too far away and it's not an expensive Uber away either. Um, Bring a sleeping bag, sleep on the street. Yeah, you know, whatever you want. (laughs) Very clean um, city. (laughs) 
I is. will say that Katie and I went to their pl- like initial planning meeting, and if anything that we talked about comes true, it's going to be the best one yet. I just feel like this is a really big year for Wizardly. Mm-hmm. It's the fifth year, so mm-hmm. they're kind of like trying to... They're trying to like establish that it is the fifth year. It's a big deal. They've done this five years in a row. It's yeah. been successful all five years. Yeah, very successful. Um, they on so it's really neat. Some people don't know this, but on Friday night they always have a five k, and then they always do the the wizard bar crawl. I think last year was the first time they did the bar crawl. Yes. So they don't always do it. Yes, they did it. But last they're doing year, it, did it did again. It. Yeah, they're doing it again this year for sure. The bar because it was very successful. The bar crawl and the five k. Saturday all day is Wizardly World of Kent. Mm-hmm. So it's Sunday they day. don't have anything planned. It's just like a Friday night and Saturday thing. Yeah, I feel like um, they should though. I well, know. I mean, I'm it's like sure. a bunch of, and then all of a sudden Sunday's like. Ugh. I'm pretty sure as <laughs> as it goes on, there probably the problem is in. like the difference between Wizardly World of Kent and like something like Ironton is Ironton is like a ticketed thing mm-hmm. that you like pay to get True. into. Yeah, so right. they have more to work with because like they have an income from the tickets. Yeah. Wizardly World of Kent is literally just like the planning committee for Main Street Kent, which like puts on events for the city. Mm -hmm. They put this on to help the businesses. So it's not really like, it's not a con. Are they a uh, nonprofit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like if whenever you go and you're like, if you park at the high school and the bus brings you over, it's like $5 donation, that money, a hundred percent of it goes to like the high school band so that they can do their things next, like go to competitions and whatnot. Like, yeah, they're not doing this to um, to like make profit. They're doing it to help the businesses in downtown Kent, basically. Yeah, I think it's a great... Th- and it, the thing with Kent is, like, I know that we've... None of us are from there, but Megan and Katie lived there, and my sister went to school there before we all went there. So, like, to see the growth mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that city has made, like... I mean, just since I've been to the event, it hasn't even been... It's mind-blowing. What is it, three years if you were to It'll go be three yeah, we've been three this year, yeah, we yeah. Been three years, yeah. If you were to go like when I was a freshman and see what downtown Kent looked like compared yeah. to like, now, it is like it's night and day, completely different. I mean, completely all the buildings different. were empty. Yeah, there was nothing down there. That's there was like no businesses. Well, yeah. and they like so built it up, now. but it's not like too big. It's like uh, it's such like a nice. It's a perfect like, college you're not, town. You're, you, yeah. well, you're used to like college towns being kind of like college towns. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. college kids don't have money to like keep not that they're keeping up buildings but you know what i mean like sometimes college towns are a little rough but like yeah the difference downtown with kent, kent it's beautiful is they have a lot of they have a lot of very um a lot of very what's the word i'm looking for like people in the community stay there for a mm-hmm. long time and like they love the city so it's not like it's a college town but it's more than that mm-hmm. so and it's people like stay. people stay yeah for sure and like there are people who like just care so much about kent so like downtown thrives because even when school's not in session it's still busy oh, which is the awesome when the students are gone it really is sorry <laughs> students but it's so nice when they're not there so much quieter <laughs> but yeah i highly recommend coming it's gonna be a blast this year even if they even if they do one new thing of based on everything that we talked about in this planning meeting like it's gonna be fun we had such a good time last year like i'm i'm excited for this yeah. co- like if i hopefully i can come hopefully it uh, hopefully will work out but god we had such a good time last year it was a lot of fun and i think that like we learned a lot last year oh my god to make it better for this year so like there were for a lot of people personally. that Correct. yeah yeah and there was and there was like <clears throat> people were coming to the booth and they wanted to meet us but not all four of us were there so we're gonna try and figure out a way to fix that we're so gonna that, have times where you, yeah you're we'll guaranteed have... to see all four of us correct and well if sarah comes yeah, <laughs> yeah. you'll yeah. know we'll know long hopefully at least like a month beforehand right if i'll be there yes i do recommend like thinking about travel plans though in terms of like hotel and whatnot because places really do book up quick because it's such a popular event so Mm -hmm. um even if you'd look at streetsboro or even like talmage slash uh bain no not bain Brimfield. brimfield yeah brimfield talmage akron uh, Streetsboro those are like good cities to look at outside of Kent if those places are full so yeah and then lastly LeakyCon don't forget about it if anybody can come we're gonna be at both of them I just want to like remind <laughs> everybody every so often that we'll be there we're gonna do meetups in both of the cities 
It's going to be fun. Orlando's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. We're so excited. They're finally taking um, programming requests yeah. now. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so we're going to submit those. Or so soon. I believe. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, just a reminder that we are still running our fundraiser for Kira. So that is pinned on all of our Facebook groups, pages, whatnot. If you want to just directly donate or anything from our Pride Line merch goes to support him. Cool. That's all I got. Finally, I'm done. That's all you got? Yeah, that's it. It's been Not 80, a lot. These years. are quick things. <laughs> well, they <laughs> were, but then I started talking about Wizardly World and then Rupert. Oh, my God, Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all could have seen her face <laughs> Tiffany mm, Katie is the Beautiful Thank you Okay guys last time Harry learned More about the noble and most ancient House of black Like how Sirius and Malfoy are related Gross <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> And Tonks and Malfoy well, that like gets a gross. <laughs> Meg pointed out like Tonks and Draco are like first cousins. Yeah, that's that's weird. So weird. I was gonna say like they're more related than him and Sirius are. Right? Yeah. Weird. Um, weird. So they spend the days cleaning <laughs> creatures. Still, Mrs. Black's right hand elf and trying to smuggle <laughs> as much as he can. Um, Harry just keeps thinking about the trial. Is he gonna be expelled? And he finds out. Tiff, your boy Dumble's been to HQ and. Uh, he hasn't been to see Harry. <laughs> he has better things to do. All oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have time for the chosen one. Not yet. Not yet. But I am the chosen one. <laughs> did you guys see that the girl that played Ramil Devane is in The in Witcher? The Witcher, I did. I, see did that. I was so that. excited. Mm. I think her name is Tris on there. I could be lying. Yeah, I think that's right. All right. Today is the day. Harry goes to the ministry to be tried for his crimes against the mentors. You know, we're using magic in front of a muggle, but, you know, the muggle already knows all about magic. So really, what harm is there? Wow. Mm. Accurate. Um, he's given words of encouragement at breakfast, and soon him and Arthur are, are making their way to the ministry. Um, Arthur just has to make a quick phone call, right? So Harry gets to see, like, the ministry <laughs> for the first time. We learn a little bit about the place, see the sights, yada da. Harry sees Kingsley at his desk. Odd interaction with him. That's cute. <laughs> That was a horrible laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, along with Arthur's, he gets to see his desk as well. And surprise, surprise, they have changed the time and place of Harry's hearing. I wonder why. Run! Harry's already five minutes late. All Run. I see, Run. put in Arthur and Harry as like running through the airport like in Home Alone. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I love Sarah that. loves that movie. It's my favorite. Did you know that the mom in so Home good. Alone is the mom yes. in <laughs> Creek? Yes. How do you not know that? <sighs> well, I know Megan. now because I just started. It's it's spelled S C H I T T apostrophe. Regardless, S. <laughs> it's not apostrophe oh. S. It's money sign. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, yeah. Uh, sorry. All right. So the morning of the hearing is finally here. Ba -ba so Harry wakes up at about half past five, abruptly, as if someone's yelling in his ear. But he's not really able to lay there with his thoughts. I feel this personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anxiety. Sarah, especially uh, Sarah, you always wake up at the weirdest times and like cannot fall back to sleep. You know, what's the worst though. And so like, I have an alarm that goes off at five o'clock when I have to work, but I can get out of bed at five 30. So I like let it go mm -hmm. and I sleep for the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Not the other day. And I was so tired. I was, I had two rough, rough days at work and I like I had a rough day. And I had to go to work on Wednesday and I woke up at five and I, my brain just started whirling. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to get, get up. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep now. I need to like change my alarm because I got to get up on time. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about Harry Potter. Harry. So he gets up, puts his glasses on, Sarah breaks things. And then <laughs> he sees that Mama Weasley has laid out his freshly laundered clothing at the foot of his bed. And the She's blank... So picture on the wall is laughing at him they're all laughing at me but that's phineas nigellus's picture yeah so i just found that amusing so anyways ron is laying sprawled out on his bed he's fast asleep his mouth is gaping open and he didn't wake up as harry um 
He didn't wake walked, up as Harry? Walked out and closed the door. Oh, there was a really I? long pause there, wasn't there? <laughs> I was like, oh, what did he wake up as? He woke up as, as himself, mm. thankfully. Harry's trying not to think about the possibility that next time he sees Ron, like, that they won't be, like, classmates anymore. Uh, I know. Super sad. Poor Harry. It's just weighing so heavy on his, his wee little heart. The kitchen. Are you Scottish? <laughs> his wee little heart. Wee little heart. Well, Shrek says his wee little bits. <gasps> Is Shrek Scottish? There's silence. <laughs> no. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know. What Your face is so red. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, his accent is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be. <laughs> Why are you guys looking at me like that? Because if he sounds like that, then he probably <laughs> is. <laughs> I just, it just never hit me. Okay. Look at the cat. <laughs> so the kitchen is not empty like he expected it to be. Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, Sirius, Lupin, and Tonks are already all there, and it seems like they're waiting for him. <laughs> so I said, I wonder how many of them also found it difficult to sleep. I know Tonks just like got off of her shift, but I feel like definitely Mr. and Mrs. Weasley are up because they, they're anxious. Mrs. Weasley is wearing a purple dressing gown i bet it's swish purple yeah. she probably looks the really pretty she probably looks great and she quickly offers him breakfast and i said here that i absolutely love tonks because she's just a regular person she says morning harry yawn tonks her hair was blonde and curly i wonder like morning. how curly it was i really want to see it is it Me like too. taylor swift fearless curly oh i like that i always want it to be sarah curly oh like wild yeah but i wonder like what shade of blonde yeah is it, is it a ashy yeah. blonde i feel like it's a very it very light blonde, blonde in my head is it bleach blonde is it draco blonde Bleach ish like draco <gasps> no they are cousins like white they though. are cousins i know she says he's blonde but hair his hair is like crazy light well they dye that or they should say they bleach it they yeah. did yeah anyways i thought they color hair sarah well color, not i dye well, eggs I don't dye hair. I polish nails. I said they bleached his hair <laughs> no, after said I said dye. dye. But you said and then dye. I said, you I said shouldn't dye. say that because they bleached <laughs> his hair because bleaching is not coloring. Let's talk about Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Shrek, baby. So she said, sleep all right? Yeah, said Harry. I've been, b- b- been up all night, she said with another stu- shuddering, sorry, yawn. Come and sit down. She drew out a chair, knocking over the one beside it in the process. <laughs> what do you want, Harry? Mrs. Weasley called. Porridge, muffins, kippers, bacon and eggs, toast. Just, just toast. Thanks, said Harry. Lupin glanced at Harry and then said to Tonks, what were you saying about scrimmager? Oh, yeah. Well, we need to be a bit more careful. He's been asking Kingsley and me funny questions. And I wanted to extend the quote to that. I do love the fact that Tonks is just like a regular person and that she knocks over the other chair. But I also wanted to bring up the scrimmager and how he's been asking Kingsley funny questions. Megan. I need to admit something for a very long time. I thought that whenever people in Harry Potter said that they drew up a chair, (laughs) that they literally like made one with their wand. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not Did you that know that Shrek like, has a Scottish accent? Sh- <laughs> 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 uh, oh, I yeah. It literally it just hit me right now. Is it now like that Doodle that Bob? Oh, I'm I'm I've been on the struggle bus for my whole life. Okay, honey, it's fine. So well, am I. Just going through a lot today. I can't be the only one that thought that they did it with magic. No, I'm sure you're not. So, listeners, let us know. It's like, oh, pull up a chair, draw up a chair. You know what I mean? Like, I, mean, I, chair. I understood that just now. But up until Wait, this you point. Were today years just old? Now? You were today years old? I was today years old. What did old I say? Wow. This day? I was I this realized. year's old. I was this year's old, guys. <laughs> yeah, when I realized, yeah. I do have too much Rupert on the brain, Ethan. You really that do. is accurate. I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. 
<laughs> so Harry tries to eat, but his toast was like chewing on carpet. Gross. Mrs. Weasley goes into mom mode and she starts fixing things about Harry's dress. She was tucking in his t-shirt label and smoothing out the creases across the shoulders. And Harry thought, and she says, Joe being she says, Harry wish she wouldn't. So in my mind, this makes me think that this could be one of two things. I think about this first when I'm anxious, I can go one of two ways. I either want to like be held or I, I don't nothing. want anybody near me. Yeah, same. I said this thankfully doesn't happen to me anymore, but it did when I was newly postpartum. Like I can think of an instance when I came home from the hospital and there was maybe like two quote extra people in my house and I had a panic attack pretty much because there was too, too many people and I needed them out. So that's kind of what it makes me think of. Or this other thing. But Sarah's hand is in the air. You tell me and then I gotta, I'm going to say what my two pieces Okay. Are. And then I said, or it could be his Horcrux Voldemort feeling. Because when I think about Voldemort, he doesn't want to touch people. Doesn't want people touching him. He's on the edge. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was thinking he's probably never had someone fuss over him like this. I so he's not used to it. Thing. And is thinking like, when, when he's having these anxious things or he's doing these things, it's almost like it's not happened to him where someone's fussing but over him and comforting she's him. She's taking care of him before. But, but not, not in a moment like this. Do you get what I'm saying? True. So I think he's not. He's probably just very overwhelmed. I think yes. And I, like you're saying, like he doesn't know if he wants to be touched or anything, but he's also not had someone been like, okay, so like you're anxious and I, let me just, because really she's also anxious. Like we've talked about the fact that we like to her, that's another, just an extension of her family. Like he is her son. That's like not legitimately hers. You know what I mean? So she's anxious for him and probably angry and all of those things. So like that's helping her anxiety because she wants to like make sure he looks good. She's going to, you know, comb his hair in a short, short second. So she's fussing with his label and she's making sure everything's smooth. So that's helping her anxiety, but it's also probably think him going like, why would she like, He's never had someone f- literally physically like fuss over his appearance before going to something like this. You get what I'm saying? Like he's never had that. I kind of think it's like a mix of all of it. I would agree. But I think that's a big part of it. You know, I just, I really want to focus on drawing out Harry's inner feelings that could be Horcrux related. I really want to draw those connections as we go through to see how much it affected him in five. But that's also just amplifying feelings he already has. So it's not giving him new feelings. It's not just, necessarily. When have we seen it give him feelings they don't have? When has anybody ever been a Horcrux who's in human form? Or even holding a Horcrux. You so know we don't saying? even know what it's like. I don't though. think it would add feelings. My personal opinion. I think it would just amplify. Take your peppers. Take your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that like even if he had like a little Tic Tac size of like anger the if the horcrux is going to uh, affect him it's just going to balloon that up so he yeah. might be feeling a b c or d but you're still also saying i don't think it, the horcrux would be like say you've never felt a feeling of whatever it doesn't have its own eh, i don't because it's, i mean it's i think it just amplifies his. your worst qualities i think or about your worst he'll fears. feel what voldemort will feel though <laughs> i've i've but I don't I think, think about I think Ron, that's just though. the vault. I think that's just Voldemort coming through the Horcrux, not necessarily the Horcrux itself. Like that's a channel. Like think about what it does to Ron. Like Ron always had those insecurities. Mm-hmm. It just amplified them so much. Mm-hmm. And even though he was wearing it, it didn't make Ron necessarily feel things he'd never felt. He did always have those feelings in the back of his mind, but he kind of like repressed them. Yes, right. I would agree. But the Horcrux made them come front and center and like easier you know for him I mean? to be like mad about it you get what I'm right. saying? I, I com- one thing's just gonna tick him off and he's gonna blow i completely understand what you're saying but i also think the horcrux makes you do things that you otherwise wouldn't have done had the horcrux not been there but that's not what i'm i agree with you but i'm just saying like it's not gonna create a feeling though. correct like it's not gonna like bring you more like it's not good if you're not an angry you've never been angry in your life you have no little any anger in you ever i don't think if you were that person that with absolutely no ooh, sorry getting fired up <laughs> so absolutely good. no anger in you 
I don't think the Horcrux could add that. But I well, think they already a- they just amplify. But when we're thinking about five nice and Voldemort knows about it, he <laughs> then can create that feeling within him that transfers to Harry. But that's not the Horcrux creating it. That's Voldemort creating it and sending it via through the, his connection. Yeah. Correct. That's not what I'm but saying. But that's what I was saying throughout five. I want to focus on that because that's it fine. is connected I don't connected think it's happening like here. That's fine. But uh, that's it's fine if you think. Okay. <laughs> We're going to agree to disagree. I just don't think the Horcrux itself is creating. I think that you guys creating. might actually no, be arguing I don't, about the same thing. <laughs> I don't think it's creating a feeling. I okay. think that Voldemort and the way that Voldemort feels about things are coming out in Harry. I guess that's what I'm saying. So you, you think you right think now he's feeling Voldemort's feelings? Well, the way that Voldemort feels about things, yeah, because Voldemort, in my mind, wouldn't want anybody touching him. So that you okay. know what I mean. Does that I make see sense? Where you're coming from. I can see. Okay. Where, I can see where I, you're coming from. I just disagree. I that's fine. In this instance, see what you mean. Okay. I can see what you mean, and I think that it might. Be I a just part of it, but I, I just think don't most, know how big that is yeah. at this moment in time because we know Voldemort really uses it later on in this book. Yeah, but I just don't know what it is right now. I think I feel <clears> like <throat> right now it's more so Harry's insecurity with mm-hmm. the situation and the Horcrux may be amplifying his anxiety and mm-hmm. amplifying his anger towards the situation. Um, and I also agree that part of it is due to the fact that he really doesn't know this type of relationship. So it's it's not that he doesn't like it. It's just that he doesn't know how to deal with it with Molly. Because he's never had it. Right. So he's like, why is someone fussing over me? I've mm-hmm. never had this before. I always deal with things on my own. Like he it's doesn't hard. know to appreciate it because he's never experienced it. And, and for someone like Harry, and we see this throughout the whole series, it's hard for him to accept help from other people, whether it's right. emotional or physical yeah, or mental. You know what I mean? Like even later on, he's like going to go out and fight the fight himself. And they're like, dude, you literally can't do this on your own. Like we are here to help you. We're not taking no for an answer. So for Harry, he's not used to having someone help him. Like, what he's going through right now is terrifying. Like he doesn't know if he's going to be able to go to school, how much trouble he's going to be in. And Molly just really wants to take some of that burden away from him. And he's not used to that. And I think also he, he feels like potentially Dumbledore's not really on his side mm-hmm. with this at this moment in time because he's had no communication with him. And he always feels like, Oh, well Dumbledore will fix it. But the fact that Dumbledore has been so absent is adding even more to his like, anxiety and negative feelings towards like this whole situation you know what i'm saying voldemort also doesn't like dumbledore (laughs) (laughs) oh my god (laughs) 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 tonks informs the kitchen crew that she won't be able to do night duty because she's too tired i said foreshadowing for arthur mr weasley says that he would cover for her instead so let's find out what Mr. Weasley's wearing today, you guys. I'm so excited. All right. Fashion he's, finder. He's Arthur wearing Weasley style. a pinstriped <laughs> trousers yes. and an old bomber jacket. Yeah, bomber jacket. Get it, queen. I, I mean, that's it. like really cute. He's, he's very Karama very, right now from that's Queer Eye. Karama. <laughs> I love a good pinstripe. I love a good, I love bomber, a good jacket. bomber jacket. <laughs> I like them on, on Not Me. I don't care. Oh, Katie, uh, they're very ma- Katie like, for me, they're very masculine on jackets. me, and I don't like Ooh, that babe. feeling. Like, yeah, That's Katie, fine. it would look good on Katie, and I've seen it on Katie, it look great. For Thanks. me, personally, not a fan. For me? On my own body. On other for people's me? body, that's great. I understand that. <laughs> I want to wear hats really bad, but oh, I look like gosh. a small child. She I looks like a little 12 year old boy. And I, I feel so bad for her because she wants to wear them so, so bad. badly, but it just doesn't work with her. I'm not a hat person, especially with curly hair. I feel like I look like carrot top with a hat on <laughs> <Got it. laughs> <Spewing> it. <laughs> <laughs> I can wear beanies. That's it. Spewing out. Anyways. I so, picture his, I'm sorry. I picture his pants being like the really high type of trousers. Fred Mertz. Too. Shout did out he, to Fred. Did you tell us what shoes he's got on? I don't believe so. I think of nice, crisp, like a, well, depending what on the color of the pants. bowling shoes? Right? Like some galoshes. <laughs> I'm bowling shoes. Crocs. I was going to say Crocs. Oh, you <laughs> oh my God. It. I don't think they were invented mm. at this point yet. <clears throat> we can drink. Rubber ducks. 
So, <laughs> rubber what, duck what slippers. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? Shoes. And he gets big enough ones where he cuts holes out and puts his feet in. But he magic hey, like they, they keep them. They keep them dry. Oh They're God. waterproof. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyways, <laughs> um, so quote the hearings on my floor in Amelia Bones' office. She's head of. Th- <laughs> Head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and she's the one who will be questioning you. Doesn't she die? Can we talk about how this hearing was supposed to know. take place in an office? Yeah. An office. An office. Well, we're not surprised by things changed. Mm-hmm. So Tonks tells him that she is fair, meaning Amelia Bones, and that she'll hear him out. Don't lose your temper and stick to the facts. And I said, this makes me think of Beauty and the Beast because all of them are like telling him all of these things. Yes. <laughs> when Cogsworth and Lumiere are like telling him how he should act when he asks her to dinner. Mm-hmm. You must control your temper. <laughs> 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 so Lupin tells him that the laws on his side and underage wizards are allowed to use magic in situations that are life threatening. Quote, something very cold trickled down the back of Harry's neck. For a moment, he thought someone was putting a disillusionment charm on him again, and he realized that Mrs. Weasley was attacking his hair with a wet comb. She pressed hard on the top of his head. Doesn't it ever lie flat? She said desperately. Harry shook his head. Reminds me of my grandma. I love her. Like, she would do that. She, like, she would be messing I love with that my hair. Describes and, like, it as outfit. attacking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because we know his hair is pretty wild. I just picture my my um, great aunt is like my grand sister, and they live together. What's her name Tessa? No, she was is Terry though, kind of close. Uh, but she would like attack my hair, and she'd be like, "You have a rat's nest." Rat's nest. I don't like, let oh. people touch my hair when I was a kid because I have super curly hair. Don't touch. Like my mom would brush it, and it would hurt. Mm-hmm. Don't brush dry curls. Also, don't brush your wet hair. Okay, we're not doing that today. <laughs> Mr. Weasley says that they are early, but they might as well go early instead of hanging out there. Good choice because we mm-hmm. know what happens later. Mm-hmm. Okay, said Harry, automatically dropping his toast and getting to his feet. You'll be all right, Harry, said Tonks, patting him on the arm. Good luck, said Lupin. I'm sure it'll be fine. And if it's not, said Sirius grimly, I'll see to Amelia Bones for you. Harry smiled weakly. Mrs. Weasley hugged him. We've all got our fingers crossed, she said. Right, said Harry. Well, see you later then. He followed Mr. Weasley upstairs and along the hall. He could hear Sirius's mother grunting in her sleep behind mm. her curtains. Mr. Weasley unbolted the door and they stepped out into the cold gray dawn. Do you think with Sirius, like, I'll see to Amelia Bones for you, was he, like, flirtatiously saying that? No, dogs like to chew on bones. Okay. Nom, nom, nom. You took that, you took that <laughs> dark place. He's <laughs> got to eat her. What did that thing say that I sent you? Do you think dogs lick us because they know that there's bones inside of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my like, mom oh my texts God. me back and she's like, you're a creep. <laughs> 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 so Harry starts to ask Mr. Weasley about how he gets to work. And we find out he usually, oh, okay, Microsoft Office. You're not going to update right now. <laughs> um, That was scary. He usually apparates, but he said it would probably be best if they arrive without using any magic because Harry needs to give like a really good impression that he's not just like, you know, using magic willy nilly. And Mr. Weasley had his hand in his pocket and Harry was pretty sure that it was like gripped around his wand the whole time just to be at the ready. So they made their way to an underground station. It's busy with muggles and Mr. Weasley's pumped. (laughs) He's like in heaven. Simply fabulous. He whispered, <laughs> indicating the automatic ticket machines. Wonderfully ingenious. They're out of order, said Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing at the sign. Yes, but even so, said Mr. Weasley, beaming fondly at them. Um, Harry handles the muggle money for them because Mr. Weasley has trouble with it. And they board the train. So they stop in the very heart of London. London? <laughs> Mr. Weasley's delighted. Uh, the way that the style swallowed the ticket <laughs> and everything is looking different to Mr. Weasley from the perspective of a muggle travel. So here we go. He opened the telephone box. Harry stepped inside wondering what on earth this was about. Mr. Weasley folded himself beside in beside Harry and closed the door. It was a tight fit. Harry was jammed against the telephone apparatus, which was hanging crookedly from the wall, though a vandal had tried to rip it off. Mr. Weasley reached past Harry for the receiver. I'm sorry. I don't know why. (laughs) Okay, Siri. (laughs) 
Mr. Weasley, I think this might be out of order, too, Harry said. No, no, I'm sure it's fine, said Mr. Weasley, holding the receiver above his head and peering at the dial. Let's see. Six. He dialed the number. Two. Four. And another four. And another two. And as the dial whirred smoothly back into place, a cool female voice sounded inside the telephone box, not from the receiver in Mr. Weasel's hand, but as loudly and as plainly as though an invisible woman were standing right beside them. Welcome to the Ministry of Magic. Please state your name and business. <laughs> Fun fact. If you look at those numbers on a telephone keypad, it spells out magic. Well, that's some crazy magic. And also for any of our Universal Orlando goers, the telephone booth outside of the entrance to Diagon Alley, if you type that in, you will hear from the lady from the ministry. Can I ask you a question? How could you've never told us that while we're at the park so we could do it? Yeah, I've never done that with you. Because <laughs> the line's always long to go in there and I just don't want to wait. Hmm. Wow. Well, Thank we can do it. Robbing me we of uh, that joy. And now you're robbing her of going to Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I've never we been can, to It's like Texas. New York all we over again. This July. is New York take two. I hope y'all have to drive back. No, I'm Ooh. just kidding. <laughs> no. I'm just playing. But I do like the um the way that the telephone box is broken. Right. It reminds me of like how people will muggles will see Hogwarts. Yes. As like abandoned and whatever. Like don't come here dangerous. Whatever. <laughs> Um, okay. So they state why they are there, and then the bag badges are dispensed. Harry pins his to his t-shirt, which states, Harry Potter, disciplinary hearing. Arthur doesn't get one because he's an employee. Quote, the floor of the telephone box shuddered. They were sinking slowly into the ground. Harry watched apprehensively as the pavement rose up past the glass windows of the telephone box until darkness closed in over their heads. Then he could see nothing at all. He could only hear dull grinding noise as the telephone box made its way down through the earth. After about a minute, though, it felt much longer to Harry. A chink of golden light illuminated his feet and winding rose up his body until it hit him in the face and he had to blink to stop his eyes from watering. That's deep. Yeah. The Ministry of Magic wishes you a pleasant day, said the woman's voice. The door of the telephone box sprang open. And Mr. Weasley stepped out of it, followed by Harry, whose mouth had fallen open. I love magic. I can't believe I never told you guys about that when we were there. Yeah, you're a jerk. I'm really. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess it's just because, like, I had done it, so I never thought about, like. Well. Now, doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> I forgive you. I'm ditching you in Dallas. <laughs> That's right. Bye. <laughs> Up in in Dallas. <laughs> that sounds like a movie. It is. It is a new movie. No, but honestly, we will do it in July. It's. I mean, it's. Cool. It just says that like they're not there right now or something. I don't remember for sure exactly what it says, but okay. I, anyway, I could have found out. I've been there a few yeah. times. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Maybe you should explore it more. <laughs> no. So they were standing at one end of a very long and splendid hallway with a highly polished dark wood floor. The peacock blue ceiling was inlaid with gleaming golden <laughs> symbols that were continually moving and changing like some enormous heavenly notice board. The walls on each side were paneled in shiny dark wood and had many gilded fireplace fireplaces set into them. So I think that they did a pretty good job at portraying this except for the ceiling. Mm -hmm. The ceiling did, was not like that in the movies. I don't even remember what it looked like, if I'm honest. I don't I, think we even saw I the ceiling. I feel like it's windows. Yeah, it was a lot of windows. I think it depends on, like, which... Because um, you see it, you know what I mean? If you think about it, you've seen it in a couple different movies. But I don't think I ever remember. It's always open. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't see, like, a silent... It's like, such I a high the, ceiling. It goes up when, really, it should go down. Yeah. Hmm. You gotta gotta get up to get down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, wait, do you think their floors go backwards? So like it goes one, then down is two, then down is three, then down is four. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Cause Maybe. they have to go d deeper underground. But the thing is, is it takes you so far down and then the ceilings are so high that you actually do probably travel up and down. So you, you know start what I mean? like so literally at the like, bottom. So maybe confused. you start at like floor 12. <laughs> right. Probably but then 13. you could go up to one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so um, I wanted to <laughs> talk about the <laughs> meaning behind like the color blue for the ceiling. Blue. So 
in color psychology, blue means trust, responsibility, and loyalty, which I think fits the ministry. I would say that's a, a does great it, color. Does it? Well, it doesn't fit the ministry, but like <laughs> theoretically it should fit the ministry. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> like I'm looking, I'm looking up, uh, like yeah. you would hope that the government would be trustworthy, responsible, and loyal. <laughs> But that's not <laughs> SpongeBob <lab>. always <laughs> the case. Um, and I said, which actually sounds a lot like Hufflepuff traits, even though it is the color of Ravenclaw. Woo, 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 woo. So, um, but it's also a calming color that equates to a higher level of intelligence, which I would agree is something that the ministry would want to portray to people. We smart. We're smart people. Um, Do you know so that yeah. blue makes you not hungry. <laughs> Blue makes you not hungry. That's why it's called the Blue Plate Special. Yeah. Oh, wait. Maybe it does make you hungry. No, I thought Which blue one is it? <laughs> red makes you not hungry. I thought Blue Plate Special was like, because it's old people eating time. <laughs> <laughs> the blue hairs. I think Blue Plate Special is like when there's a buffet. So they're like, oh, you can eat all you want, but then you get really <laughs> full. So you don't actually eat a lot. Um, I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, on this Wizarding episode is called the Blue Plate Special. <laughs> Um, anyway, on wizardingworld.com, they have the article from Pottermore that talks about the importance of colors that we talked about, like, probably in one of the first episodes, because mm-hmm. we were talking about, like, how important colors are, and that's we where the bell came leaky. from. Yes. So, they say about the color blue, um, it's historically, color. It's historically blue. blue has been associated with the cult of the Virgin Mary, and it also appears in the heraldry of many kings of france making it spiritual and royal nowadays blue is one of the most ambiguous clothing colors something the designers of this website discovered when studying the harry potter films harry apparently nearly always wears blue Really? I also wear a lot of blue because I look good and it brings out the color of my eyeballs. Are you I a royalty, Sarah? Yeah, I am from royalty. <laughs> Allegedly is what I've been told. are also blue in the movies. <laughs> Who's? Oh, Harry's, Harry's <laughs> eyes, yeah. So are lilies, apparently. Um, so gold, also. The color gold is cousin to the color yellow and brown and is also associated with illumination, love, compassion, courage, passion, magic, and wisdom. Gold is a precious metal that is associated also with wealth, grandeur, and prosperity, as well as sparkle, glitz, and glamour. But I think wealth, grandeur, and prosperity also fits a ministry because they want to portray mm-hmm. that they know what they're doing with money and yeah, we're protecting you and <laughs> fudge is not protecting them. But anyway, so more descriptions of the ministry. Um, This is a quote from the book. Halfway down the hall was a fountain. A group of golden statues, larger than life-size, stood in the middle of a circular pool. Tallest of them all was a noble-looking wizard with his wand pointing straight up in the air. Grouped around him were a beautiful witch, a centaur, a goblin, and a house elf. I just want to pause right there and say that they have the witch grouped around the wizard... And she is shorter, meaning that they must think men are better. But anyway. I thought this as well when I was reading it again. I call hmm. Bob's shorts on <laughs> that. <laughs> um, the last three were all looking adoringly up at the witch and wizard. Okay, so I guess that's, at least they're looking at the witch and wizard. Wow. Glittering jets of water were flying from the ends of the two wands. The point of the centaur's arrow, the tip of the goblin's hat, and each of the house elves' ears. So that the tinkling hiss of falling water was added to the pops and cracks of apparators and the clatter of footsteps as hundreds of witches and wizards, most of whom were wearing glum early morning looks, strode toward a set of golden gates at the far end of the hall. I think they should all be on an even plane. Yeah, right? All of them. Well, they're not. It represents. Or they should all be in a big hug. I'm, I'm all so, for a group hug, but that's not where they're at now. Right. Uh, yeah. So interestingly enough, the way that they portrayed it in the movie is a little bit different. They have the wizard by himself in the center of the atrium. Mm -hmm. And it's just a statue of just the wizard. And then they have the witch, goblin, house elf, and centaur Mm. as the fountain Mm. looking at the wizard. Hmm. That's even further. Yeah. Not a fan. Okay. Mm. Um, So on the Harry Potter wiki, uh, they have a... I mean... We don't know a whole ton about this <coughs> statue. Yeah. Um, but what we do know is that it's located in the atrium. Yeah. And it is on level eight. Look at 
We just answered our question. It starts on level eight of oh, the ministry. Got it, got it, got it. So the atrium's on level eight. The large golden statues are located in the middle of the pool, and the tallest of them all is the wizard. Like I wonder I just why said. they changed it. I don't know. And all proceeds from the fountain are given to St. Mungo's Hospital for magical maladies and injuries, mm-hmm. which is nice. Agreed. Um, the witch and wizard are the two focal points of the fountain, with the other, quote, lower beings looking up in awe and adoration. This is very unrealistic, as centaurs and goblins consider themselves superior to wizards and mm-hmm. witches. Mm-hmm. House elves, on the other hand, have no other joy in life other than to be in the service of wizards. The fountain supposedly represented harmony in the wizarding world. Although Albus Dumbledore thought otherwise. Um, so interestingly enough, we get introduced to this fountain now. It's going to get destroyed later in this book mm-hmm. in the spoiler. battle. Spoiler. People and know that they're spoilers. <laughs> it does get rebuilt by Voldy into the Magic is Might statue. Ugh. Um, which is a disgusting statue. I think it's great. Just kidding. But awful. Anyway, so <sighs> Uh, hold on. Sorry. Let me go back to my notes here. So the statue. Oh yeah. So I found on stack exchange, a little article about people discussing like what they think may have happened to it after, like after the magic is might is over. Mm. Or no, no, no. Between, between this and the magic is might statue. Like, did they rebuild it? Did it just not exist anymore? Like why, mm-hmm. you know, like it, like did they just not have one for two years? Maybe. Mm. Um, what are people so saying? I don't know their name. Oh, <laughs> their name on here is the Dark Lord. Oh. <laughs> um, we don't see anything of the Ministry of Magic in Book Six, which is the time period you're asking about, like whoever ans- asked this question. Right. My best guess is that it was probably removed since Dumbledore says that it was destroyed during the fight. Why he says destroyed, I don't know. Two of the statues were hit by Avada Kedavra, but I would have thought that it'd be nothing a bit of Reparo couldn't fix. I disagree with that statement, though, because if yeah. they're hit with Avada Kedavra, yeah, Reparo's different. not fixing it. Correct. Like, for example, like, werewolf cuts don't heal the same as right. other cuts because it's a dark magic. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, nevertheless, maybe the fountain was beyond magical repair. Or perhaps the ministry decided to replace it with something more appropriate, seeming as it was now the headquarters of the fight against the Death Eaters. All we know is that by Deathly Hollows, the fountain is gone. What for, what happened to it remains a mystery. Like it's a department. Uh, department of mysteries. So wait, what do they mean by the, in Deathly Hollows it was gone? Because the Magic of Might statue is there. Okay, so here's what I think. And obviously, I don't know, but I, this is just what I'm thinking. I think that they probably put another statue in there because we know the Magic is Might... Um, fountain had wizards basically crushing muggles. other yeah crushing muggles so i bet that they like when voldemort's regime like took over that they changed it yeah i could see that mm-hmm. happening to match what the ministry at that time goal was which was muggleborn registration right you know and all of that telling jazz. them the third <laughs> Muggles and all that jazz. Yeah, and literally they stole all their wands. Okay, yeah. we're yeah. gonna snap your wands. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> interrogate Let you. Let and it all that jazz. The Dementors will get you. No. <laughs> <laughs> So a quote from the book is all proceeds from the fountain of magical brethren will be given to St. Mungo's hospital for magical maladies and injuries. If I'm not expelled from Hogwarts, I'll put in 10 galleons. Harry found himself thinking desperately. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, he does. That's awesome. Um, So Mr. Weasley leads Harry over to the security booth to the left. (laughs) Me Weasley. Me Weasley. Um, She's, he wants to be after she meets Rupert. Oh Weasley, Weasley, Weasley. We Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> he had a Kanye West hoodie on the other day, though, in that I picture, that. and I was really disappointed. Can you ask him that? Excuse me. <laughs> you don't really like Kanye, do This is you? my only chance to talk to you, but excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what we, were you wearing? I, we I need something. to know. Um, <sighs> so the security booth to the left in a wizard in peacock blue robes which i said must be the ministry's color helps them um the wiki has a little bit of info on the magic security desk as they call it or rather magic 
Ministry of Magic security desk. desk. The magic oh my Ministry God, of Magic. Really the magic right desk. Now. There's a little magic desk. Um, the magic desk. <laughs> so at this desk sits the wand weigher, which is a device that examines the characteristics of a visitor's wand. Well, the weighing of the wands. Yeah, kind of. Mm. Um, mm. All visitors must present themselves and their wands at it this has desk. Weight. <laughs> <laughs> upon entry to the ministry it caught fire during the duel in the ministry atrium and it is unknown if it was rebuilt Probably. I would assume that it yeah. was the desk. what's the point it of just doing caught fire. it doing what weighing it I don't know like why do they need I guess maybe it's just like a means of identification it's like your ID. yeah yeah but why is it like, not my one I don't know bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> not me who oh put that there <laughs> you are out of your mind. So it says a wand weigher was a brass instrument used to identify a wand's length, core material, and the length of time it has been used. One of these devices sits at the security desk in the Ministry of Magic atrium. Um, when a visitor enters the ministry, they have to register their wand at the security desk, and this instrument is used. The wand is placed upon the brass scales, and a slip of parchment with the wand's specifications comes out of the machine. Eric Munch was the security <laughs> guard who used the instrument when Harry Potter visited the ministry in 1995. It's a fantastic name. So it was hit with a killing curse during the duel. <laughs> uh, and that's what caused it to set fire. Pour so one out. Pour, pour one, one out. One for out. The, pour the one, the one out. Sips the sadness for that weighty, 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 weighty thing. <laughs> it weighs on my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric, Eric Munch says love eric munch I lo- I, yeah i love him <laughs> great name yeah. rumor has it he likes brunch <laughs> <laughs> i like brunch and things that go crunch <laughs> especially at lunch <laughs> we love him a bunch <laughs> oh my god anyway <laughs> i have a hunch <laughs> about eric munch <laughs> I love him a bunch. Oh, you already said that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. It's still mm. funny. He Joke says, uh, 11 inches, Phoenix Feather Core, been in use four years. That correct? Yes, said Harry nervously. I keep this, said the wizard, impaling the slip of parchment on a small brass spike. You get this back, he added, thrusting the wand at Harry. Thank you. Hang on, said the wizard slowly. His eyes had darted from the silver visitor's badge on Harry's chest to his forehead. Thank you, Eric, said Mr. Weasley firmly, and <laughs> grasping Harry by the shoulder. He steered him away from the desk and back into the stream of wizards and witches walking through the Golden Gates. This is one time I want them to use surnames. Thank you, Munch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a bunch, Munch. <laughs> yes. After the security wizard recognizes Harry, <sighs> Arthur pulls him off towards the lifts. All right. A lift arrives for them, and Harry finds himself jammed up against the back wall, because that's how many witches and wizards are in there. I like the idea of that Joe describes like hundreds of them just walking around. Yeah. So like for Harry to think like, well, there's got to be a bunch of other witches and wizards out in the world. Like <laughs> here's a whole collection of them. Many of these witches and wizards were looking at him curiously. And of course they're like, that's Harry Potter. So he's looking at his feet. So does that to catch Harry anyone's Potter. eye? Harry, Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. <laughs> Singing my song all, all day long. And in the street. Oh, no. <laughs> that was magic. <laughs> He's also trying to flatten his fringe, which I like that Harry fringe. Potter taught me that. So fringe, if anyone doesn't know, is just like your bangs. So yep. It took me a long time to learn that. Hmm. First stop it is... It took me all of one minute to read about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never looked into it until like I think fan fiction fringe. one time. Really? Yeah. I used to watch this girl Shrek's make YouTube got a videos Scottish she's British. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she would talk about... She would, she's like, I'm just going to pat my fringe. Chairs. And I was like, you're going to do what to your what? It's my fringe. You're going to do what to your what? Um, there's a cool salon called Fringe. It's not closed, but I was like, I really want to work. There. I go there. It's nice. No, there's one that you don't go to. It's closed now. Oh, well, the one in Stowe is called Fringe. Yeah, it was not in Stowe. They did my hair. Anyway. Go ahead, Katie. First stop, level Harry seven. Mm. The oh, Department of Magical Games and Sports. Department <laughs> of Magical Games and Sports. So this includes the British and Irish Quidditch League headquarters. The official Gobstones Club <laughs> and the Ludicrous Patents Office. Oh I God. love that. <laughs> I know. Um, so Harry can see a little bit into the Do you corridor. Think, I have a question. Do you think that Ludicrous is the boss there? <laughs> Luda. <laughs> He's a wizard. Tiffany cannot handle us today. <laughs> uh, 
stand up. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God. That's a that's headcanon. So <laughs> Harry can see into the corridor, and it's untidy with Quidditch posters all over the walls. And a wizard with an armful of broomsticks pries himself out of the lift. Then they go up another level. Are we going up? Is that what we decided? I think down. Up. What? Up. You go all all the way, the way down way just to down. go back up again? Yeah, because you go all the way down to level eight. You work your way up. And you work your way up. Okay. I don't know. That's what I'm envisioning. Tell me, tell me thoughts. Hmm. Okay. Level Maybe the new parks will tell us. Because then he has to no. go back down to get to his hearing. True. But further down, right. correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, here's yeah, yeah. the atrium. There's floors above it and, and below, below it. it. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've always envisioned, at least. Level six. Cool. Mm. Now, what is wrong? I was with holding you? it. Oh. Department of Magical Transport. So this is the Flu Network Authority, the Achoo. Broom Regulatory Control, <laughs> <laughs> the Port Key Office, and the Apparition Test Center. So when the lift opened, some pap- paper airplanes swooped in. They're a pale violet color with the Ministry of Magic stamped along the edge of the wings. So Mr. Weasley tells Harry that those are interdepartmental memos. They used to use owls, but the mess was unbelievable. Did you get that memo? What movie is that? Come on. I don't know. What? I have no idea. <sighs> so with all these departments, I tried to like look up something <laughs> cool. Oh my God. <laughs> I tried to look up something cool about them if it was there for me so something i saw with the flu network authority um so they the employees of that department have the power to observe and monitor the flu network obviously but they also may (gasps) eavesdrop on conversations held through the network so are these like the cia people (laughs) right that we joke about all the time this is siri and alexa we love you the government's great (laughs) (laughs) we have no qualms with anything (laughs) but but yeah Creepy. Right. Perfect. Trigger warning. The following content involves murder. Because they say they record everything, don't they? Actually, there was just a, this guy, um, I think murdered his girlfriend or whatever, and Siri or Alexa caught the entire thing. Holy like, crud. Like, um, what do you mean? The, the whole- audio of it. Wow. Yeah. That's terrifying. Interesting. Yes. It's terrifying on many Because levels. they're like trying to say, like, are they allowed to use, like, Yes, they does that hold up in court? Are, are, yeah, is it does yeah. it hold up in court? Are they allowed to like use, use it, it and stuff evidence? like that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, then we have the port key office. Um, so a cool fact about this, and I'll just read it from the the facts oh, I found in this it. section are from the wiki. Mm-hmm. Um, it is possible that the port key office is a relatively modern division, according to Wonder Book Book of Spells, which I think is a video game. It is for PlayStation. Um, Orabella Orabella Nutley. Hmm. An employee of the Improper Use of Magic office was responsible for organizing port keys for the race between Torquil McTavish and Silvio Astolfin. And that was in Can 17 you say that again? Astolfin. <laughs> that was in 1754. So that implies that the port key office hadn't existed yet. Mm. So it seems like it's young. Mm-hmm. Who McTavish knew? McTavish is like a last name from Outlander. McTavish. I mean, I, I've in real life, but that's what it makes me think of. Let's travel. Level five. Department of International Magical Cooperation. You should say these levels in her voice. Level five. Department of International Magical Cooperation. Um, so that includes International Magical Trading Standards Body. She's still saying these things. The All right, International no, Magical <laughs> Law. Does Office she of Law. Yeah. yeah, she does. <laughs> and the International Confederation of Wizards British Seats. Do you want to hear a funny story about elevators talking? So oh I my worked, gosh, here we go. How many no, it's quick. So oh, okay. when I worked at Fairview, <laughs> like back Iowa when I was story. in high school. No, 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 no. Back when I worked at Fairview, when I was in high school, I worked in the cafeteria and that's when they like just got like elevators that would be like, um, tell you what floor, like you're either going to be like on mm. whatever level, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. floor one, whatever. Um, and then this woman I worked with didn't like no one, obviously like that's not something you need to announce. By the way, the elevators talk. So she had no idea and talked back to them. She goes, I thought, I thought it was like someone talking to me. So I was like talking back. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Level four. Level four. Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures. So this is <laughs> the Beast and Being and Spirits Division. It's where I go. The Goblin Liaison <laughs> Office. Liaison. Liaison. <laughs> 
Oh, I I'm love sorry, it. I don't mean to laugh at you. That's almost that's okay. as good as you saying Tucson instead of Tucson. Arizona. I had never <laughs> seen it before. Okay. <laughs> I'd never seen it before. And the pest. Oh, God. Now I'm going to cough. The Pest Advisory Bureau. I said that one right. <laughs> so the wizard with the fire breathing chicken left. Because that was his floor. Do you think it cooks itself? Level <gasps> three. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> What came first, the chicken wing or the grilled chicken? It hiccups and cooks itself. <laughs> Level the three. Ooh, this is a mess. <coughs> Department of Magical Accidents and Catastrophes. We go from accidents all the way to 60 to catastrophes. <laughs> so this is the Accidental Magical Reversal Squad, the Obliviator Headquarters, and the Muggle-Worthy Excuse Committee. I and I was that. like, what is that? It's literally the committee... The committee the committee that thinks up excuses that will explain magical happenings to muggles so they I really that have to know do that muggles. they really have to know muggles to yeah. do that job i would I love that it. job that'd be, that'd be incredible so fun. that would be awesome um okay that's all the floors we get to see no wait i lied so all that's left is mr weasley harry and one witch so then they reach the level two that's their level so this is the, the department of magical law enforcement so that's the improper use of magic office, the Aura headquarters, and the Wizengamot administrative services. So this is their floor, and Mr. Weasley's office is on the other side. It's interesting though that like you like I feel like we always brush off his job, but it's on a pretty important floor with like yeah. a pretty important Absolutely thing. I was agree on that too. I don't think his his job is super important. I would it agree. Is. I think it's worthy of an office alone that's larger. You know? I like, agree with you. Yeah. I think it's very not important. People, it just gets shunted. Yeah. And not people, you know. It's just because it has to do with muggles and yeah. muggles yep. are less. Yep. And that it's a laughable. I don't mm. know why. It's very important. So they pass through a window. And it has sunlight streaming through it. And Harry's like, hold on. Aren't we underground? So Mr. Weasley tells him, yeah, they're enchanted windows. The magical maintenance crew decides their weather every day. And according to mm -hmm. him, they had two months of hurricanes when they wanted a pay raise. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. So they turn a corner, they go through some heavy oak doors, and they come out in a cluttered open area divided into cubicles that are buzzing with talk and laughter. This is the Orr headquarters. I love that they're in cubicles. It makes me feel better about my life. <laughs> <laughs> you have a cube? I have a cube. I wish I had a cube. My cube's kind of open, which I wish it wasn't because... I just, w I miss my old cube. Anyway, the cubicles were filled with wanted wizard posters, family pictures, Quidditch team posters, and Daily Prophet articles. Mm. Yes. I think it's cool that we're seeing this because, like, we know now that this is going to be, like, Harry's headquarters when he finishes school, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just I cool. also like that. That means that he's by Arthur. That's true. And Ron, too, because Ron, for a brief period of time, works with Harry. That's mm -hmm. cute. I love that the it's talked like this is like an open yet cluttered yet they're a very serious profession and yet they're laughing and mm -hmm. like there's a mm -hmm. lot of buzz going on. Yes. And they're messy and that just gives me life because it makes me feel better about my mess of a life. Right. Your life isn't a mess. My life isn't a Our mess, house but my house mess. is a mess. That is accurate. <laughs> you know, when you're sick, things just slip by a little bit. Yeah. So they run into Kingsley and him and Mr. Weasley are talking to each other as if they don't really even know each other. And Harry's about to be like, hey, Kingsley, what up? And Mr. Weasley steps on his foot because he's not supposed to know who he is. Correct. Vinny also pointed out that Hermione is also on this floor later on in her career whenever she does law. Maybe this is why Ron leaves because nobody can get their work done. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you not know what in I was way just of, thinking? Like, they're all like all of them hanging out. Not that Ron's a nuisance because I love him. He's the best. I wonder if like he and Harry, you know how they are with their schoolwork and all of that. But like later he, in their they adult could be life, a bad influence. Too. Like yeah. I wonder if Ron was like, you know, I was thinking about staying home with the kids, and Harry's just like, yeah, that's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> See them like <laughs> setting like, dumb probably, bobs off on oh, each other's yeah, desks. Right. He's like, I probably will finally get some work done. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, he doesn't um, stay at home with the kids. He does, but he also works with George. Yeah, but. George. George. I thought you were going to say Fred, and I was like, oh. Ooh, that's a no, sad they work tweet. with his memory. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> so they head to Kingsley's office, and Sirius's face is plastered all over it because he's secretly hunting him. Or not secretly hunting him. He's pretending to hunt him and giving Ooh. bad advice to the minister. So this newspaper. Where did they say he is? Um, God, what was the last place they said he was? Was it Syria? Something with an S. Or Serbia. Serbia, maybe? 
I Some are remember. far, and I feel like with an S. Um, but He's it, not in England. <laughs> no, but he actually is. Uh, there's newspaper cut it, clippings all over and old pictures, even the one of him as best man at the Potter's wedding that Harry recognizes. So I wanted to read from the book just because I really like the exchange between Kingsley and Mrs. We- Mr. Weasley because they go like from business don't know you to like, oh, we're Personal. actually in a secret society yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> we're secret buddies. Yeah, we're, mm-hmm. we're pals. Here, said Kingsley brusquely to Mr. Weasley, shoving a sheaf of parchment into his hand. I need as much information as possible on flying muggle vehicles sighted in the last 12 months. We've received information that Black might still be using his old motorcycle. Kingsley tipped Harry an enormous wink and added in a whisper, Give him the magazine. He might find it interesting. Then he said in normal tones, And don't take too long, Weasley. The delay on the, and that fire legs report <laughs> held our investigation up for a month. If you had read my report, you would know that the term is firearms, said Mr. Weasley coolly. I literally, I'm like, fire legs. I'm like, what does he mean? And then I, two seconds later, I was like, oh, he's not saying it right. So good. And I'm afraid you'll have to wait for information on motorcycles. We're extremely busy at the moment. He dropped his voice and said, if you can get away by seven, Molly's making meatballs. <laughs> is it a Monday? Mm. yeah i think do we so. know only because like my grandma would always make spaghetti on monday so it's like monday night monday, monday. We had spaghetti just what does she say meatball. monday night spaghetti that's what it. i made for dinner this monday it's I love just, it. another meatball just not with me <laughs> <laughs> now that needs to be the title <laughs> no i like i like <laughs> lover of brunch eric much <laughs> <laughs> it's so good so Mr. Weasley Beautiful. beckons Harry with him and he leads him out of Kingsley's cubicle into another passage. Here's where we all can say the same, same argument we said before. So they turn into a dimly lit and distinctly shabby corridor. They reach a dead end. There's a door on the left. Broom cupboard. There's a door on the right. Misuse of muggle artifacts. Why? Why? Because it has to do deserves, with muggles. Yeah, but as I'm sure Sarah will bring up, like Mr. Weasley's inbox is like way over full He's constantly busy, even back in Chamber of Secrets. Like he mm-hmm. nine raids, like he was up all yeah. night doing these things. It's and not it like might he doesn't have things to do. Right. And I'm yeah. not saying that like a nose biting teacup <laughs> is like catastrophic to the wizarding world, but like someone needs to take care of those things and those things happen all the time. It's it's a lot of little them. things. It's that's so it's stupid. Well, like they just um I think and I've talked about this with other things. But, you know, they, they think that they're so much better and smarter than muggles. Yeah. So they don't need to worry about them as much. But realistically, like, muggles aren't dumb. You know, they're able to fly. They're able to, you know, have vaccines and cure illnesses and all these things like electricity and plumbing. Like, they're they're not dumb. They went to the moon There's in 1969. rubber ducks <laughs> for crying out loud. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> we invented the rubber ducks, so. Are you laughing at me? Huh? <laughs> Those rubber ducks. <laughs> rubber ducks. <laughs> you're my friend. Nope. Burn out, burn out. I don't know the words to that song. It's not that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right. Me, you're so fun. You're the one. You're the one. <laughs> it's Arthur's office time, right? Arthur's office time. I'm ready. <laughs> it's very small. There are two desks that have been crammed inside, and Harry notices there's not much extra room to move around. There's also filing cabinets, and every single one of them, and I don't think it tells us how many, are overflowing with files. And then um, it seems like on every clean surface, there's not, because there's files everywhere. (laughs) Um, And he also notices... And like some free space on the wall, Arthur has several posters of cars. One has a dismantled and Piction. Hold on, it's Piction is not a word. I mean, it is, is Piction a word. It's not. <laughs> it also has a picture of a dismantled engine. There's illustrations of post boxes that it looked like he had ripped them out of a kid's like l- little children's book. Um, and then has a diagram showing how to wire a plug. Um, <coughs> I don't know why I'm suddenly dying. You just really are passionate about plugs. I do. I love him. So on his inbox, on his desk, or in his inbox, um, Harry sees that there's a toaster that's hiccuping, and there's also a pair of empty gloves. They're leather, and they're twiddling their I thumbs. Love I love it, too. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of Dumbledore's glove yeah. from Fantastic Yeah, maybe Beasts. it is the glove. Maybe. Oh. Maybe it went rogue. Maybe. Rogue glove. The second one. Rogue Rogue glove, glove two. I just watched Lost in Paris. I just watched <laughs> Wally last night. Rogue Robots. I've never seen Wally. <gasps> Get out of this basement it's right so now. Good. I've never seen it. 
It's so good. I've it's seen like, maybe five minutes of it. It's like Up, Toy Story, and Wally are probably like the greatest Pixar films. Brave. It's not I Pixar. Really brave. Yes, what is, is Pixar? It's actually Pixar, not just Disney. Brave is Pixar. I apologize. You're correct. Well, okay. <laughs> that Don't quickly. Me. I didn't question. <clears throat> he also notices that, like, next to his little inbox, he has a picture of the whole family of the Weasley clan. And Harry <laughs> notices that it seemed that the Percy in the picture has walked out of it. Oh, Percy. <sighs> they don't have a window in their office, even though Arthur's like, we've asked, but they don't seem, you know, it's not important to them. They don't care. That's such do mm-hmm. poop. And so Ari, Ari, <laughs> Ari, Ari, Ari tells Ari, Arthur tells Harry to take a seat in Perkins chair. So that must be the person he's working with. Um, Cause he's not in yet. And so he goes, he, you know, wiggles his way into sit in the empty chair behind his desk. Um, and then Arthur starts kind of to go through his paperwork and like the stuff that um, Kingsley gave him. And he f- sees the magazine that he's supposed to give Harry, except he's not. He's supposed to give it to Sirius. It's the quibbler. And is this the first time we've heard of the quibbler? I uh, think maybe. It we didn't hear about it in Goblet, no. did we? Because we haven't met Luna, we haven't met correct? Luna. No. Yeah, you are right. So the quibbler, it's a magazine. It's marketed as the, this is from the Wikia. Um, and there's also an article on the Wizarding World, which it's which is better, um, the Daily Prophet or the Quibbler. So from the Wikia, it's like the Quibbler is marketed as the Wizarding World's alternative voice, which is sometimes what you need. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a Wizarding tabloid published and edited by Xenophilius Lovegood, who is the father of Luna Lovegood, who we haven't met yet, but we're recording it on her birthday. So happy, happy birthday. birthday, girl. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, <clears throat> Luna gets every issue of the Quibbler when it is published, which could contribute to her often odd beliefs. So they publish odd articles, including conspiracy theories and discussions of imaginary creatures. It also published Rita Skeeter's interview of Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort's return. Lord. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, many think the Quibbler is rub- rubbish, including Hermione Granger. Hmm. Hermione. Uh, Rita Skeeter and Dirk Cresswell. Anyways, the later referred to it as the lunatic rag and when Lu- uh, Hermione informed Rita that she would be publishing the interview in the Quibbler Rita looked at Hermione with disdain but you know re- oh, I guess if Hermione is publishing it like I was thinking like you could like nowadays you could just publish your own piece like on a blog or something um, and so it started in the 80s it's a magazine published with ridiculous articles such and such it's crumpled horn horned snore cack snore cack Snorkak. Uh and we'll see it like um throughout the series. Can you imagine Rita Skeeter with a blog? <laughs> oh my be god. Awful. She probably would be like Perez Hilton. It'd be called yeah. like the Green Quill. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good blog <laughs> name. <laughs> Let's start one. <laughs> Let's just do like uh, what's that called? A parody blog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the article was originally published on Pottermore, actually not terribly far. What? It's not terribly old. It was published on June 11, 2018. <laughs> um, which br- wizarding publication would you prefer to have your <laughs> with your morning cornflakes? Um, well, I wouldn't says, want cornflakes. <clears throat> Correct. Agreed. Neither would I. You know me. I like a bag. Bagels and eggs. Nope. Bacon and eggs. What is wrong with me? I don't know. Just read your notes, man. So just like Muggles, a witcher <laughs> wizard also fan- fancies a sit down with a cup of tea or coffee. And a newspaper or magazine from time to time. We saw quite a few of these Wizarding World publications from which broomstick to which weekly. Mm -hmm. But two we learned the most about were the Daily Prophet and more uh, unconventional news source, The Quibbler. It says both publications perform important roles during Harry Potter's story. While The Daily Prophet seemed to be the go-to Wizarding newspaper that pretty much everyone read, The Quibbler was the more eccentric choice edited by Luna Lovegood's father, Xenophilius, who preferred to report on crumpled horned snorkaks Rather than, you know, actual news. But if you were a wizard, what would you grab for? Here's our case for each of these. Blah, blah. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can go and read it. We'll post it. So it's got the case for the Daily Prophet, pros and cons. Case for the Quibbler, pros and cons. Um, so. And they said their winner is, after much deliberation, we appreciate the quirks and good nature of the Quibbler more, even if it was definitely not the most accurate news source in the world, but at least in the face of Voldemort, it fought for integrity and truth in a time of great darkness. Well, it says, plus, until it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it says plus free <laughs> Spectre Specs. God, yeah. Woo. I just think that you should read more than one news source on an article. 
For or sure. an event, things like that. Because people write with bias, even when, no matter how hard they try not to. And there are always things out there that show you like where news sources are on the spectrum of like left and right and what is considered in the middle. Also, keep an eye out for fake news. Well, yeah, legitimate. Sure. Don't get your news from Facebook. Yeah. I'll never forget that woman sharing that post, the picture from that Tropic Thunder movie yes. being like, oh my no God. one's gonna, no one's gonna share this picture of like Vietnam, like veteran, like soldiers. And she shared it and people were like, that's from a movie. They're that's not. That's Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I see it now. <laughs> I'll never forget God. that because it still makes me laugh. Hashtag fake news. So he's going through his papers. And he gets a memo about um, the fact that there's still a problem with regurgitating toilets. Which <laughs> is so disgusting. Uh, and Harry's like, I'm sorry, what? Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, anti muggle pranksters are jinxing toilets so that when a muggle uh, flushes them, uh, instead of the waste products uh, going down the uh, toilet, it comes back at them. Guys. And I said, So that's pretty revolting. <laughs> It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I always Can you said, imagine? Like, if I got like vomit on me, I would just die. If I, I mean, but at least it'd be my own. Uh, uh, gosh, nope. it's gag worthy. Nope. So then the muggles will call in plumbers or, you know, pumbles. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. And, um, but they don't really know what to do. So they're, they're going in there probably scratching their heads, being like, I don't know what's wrong with your toilet. Don't use it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Go to the Marks down the street or something. <laughs> no one's going to know what Marks is. I know. Go what is make- wrong with you? And why <laughs> would you even pull that store out? Go to Mickey all Mickey's. the stores you could go to. <laughs> she says Marks. <laughs> the Northeast Ohio specific <laughs> store. <laughs> Do they even have a bathroom you can use? Yeah, yeah you don't want to go in there. Katie and I there. both worked at. Fun fact about us. Yeah. She doesn't say like Target. Yeah, <laughs> go, to, go to your local Target. Go to Marks. Or your, or or your like grocery McDonald's. store. Or McDonald's. I guess it's true. Go to the Don's. <laughs> <laughs> you the re- it's at the Don's. Um, and so they don't know, like the plumbers will come in. They don't know what's wrong with it, what the issue is. Because realistically, it's a magical problem. Correct. Um, Sounds like a magical problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so Harry, he's like, oh, are the auras going to go after him? And he's like, ha, that's too trivial for them. No, we'll send out magical law enforcement patrol. And I shortened it to Malep. 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 And so I was like, I don't remember ever hearing about these things. So on the Wikia, it says the magical law enforcement squad was a subdivision of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement and the Ministry of Magic, comprised of a team of witches. Nope, that's not a word. Wizards and witches tasked with general law enforcement. Trained hit wizards were a part of the squad, and they were dispatched to deal with high-profile arrests. Mm. Um, so that's cool. Arresting serious. Perhaps. Arresting toilets. So I think that, like, aurors are just, you know, they're into what they think are more important things than... Mm-hmm. Not going Muggles after finding out magic. ruffians, barfing hooligans. Toilets. So then Perkins has arrived. Yay! Yay, Perkins! Um, and he tells them the time and the place of the hearing has changed. And he like was like, I don't know if you were here yet or not. So I like even tried to reach you at home, but you know Arthur's not home. He's there. Mm-hmm. Um, so the <laughs> hearing is set to, to be nope is set to start at eight o'clock down in courtroom 10 and they have to go quick because harry should have been there five minutes ago Mm. so they book it they start running harry wonders why the time changed and harry's like dude stop asking questions we gotta run um so they run to the lifts it's a good thing they got to the ministry so early because otherwise they'd have been super late and if they had been late it would not have been good um, Arthur isn't pleased, you know, with the elevator kept stopping on like the floors that people needed to go to. So he's like anxiously like tapping, um, floor nine and he, hoping it's like going to go faster, which, you know, it never does. If you're in an elevator trying to get there, you're like, Must go, 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 go. What if he um, ran into buddy, the elf <laughs> on the elevator? Oh my God. He would have died. <laughs> um, so we learn that these courtrooms haven't been used in years and he seems to be kind of working through like 
and he's talking out loud like why are they going there i wonder what they're doing kind of thing like um you know but he doesn't really voice anything because a wick uh, a witch carrying a smoldering, except it says smoking goblet, came out to the left. So he stops talking and he doesn't like kind of finish his thought out loud. So she gets out on the atrium level and then a sallow skinned wizard with a mournful face named Bodie. Is it Bode or Bodie? I have to say Bode, but I've I never thought of Bode. Bode. B O D E. Yeah. Yeah. Bode. Um, so he gets on and he mentions how he doesn't see Arthur down here that much. And Arthur's like, well, I'm on urgent business. And he kind of like, the Bode guy <laughs> looks at. Uh, Harry and he's like, huh? Hmm, yeah, 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 urgent business. business. <laughs> I heard you were fighting some dementors. <laughs> pew pew pew. You know, spells. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew pew. You know, spells. Um, and so then the lift lady announces that it's the Department <laughs> of Mysteries, <laughs> and they get the all. lift lady. <laughs> Department of Mysteries. Mysteries. I will say that, like, I tried to look up, and I don't know if this is him or not. So mm. I did look up Bode from Harry Potter because we don't get a first name here. He dies. Well, here, oh, that was weird. I touched my computer screen and things moved, but, like, not. It just was, like, a happenstance of me touching the screen, not that it's a touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Broderick Bode is a British wizard and an unspeakable who works in the Deprinen- nope. <laughs> British Ministry of Magic Department of Mysteries. He's partnered with Professor Sal Croker and a friend of Arthur Weasley. He's moited. Yeah. What's he doing speaking if he's an unspeakable? All right. Yep. That's I'm, enough. I'm just asking the questions that need to be That's asked. That's enough. It's a valid question. Thank you. Tiffany, I, I, thought, I thought you were on my side. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll learn about him more later. Mm. Um, when does he die? January. <laughs> <laughs> During the battle? No. He <laughs> just flew <pull> off January. <laughs> <laughs> he no, he does. gets strangled by the uh, uh, devil's snare when he's in um, St. Mungo's. In this book. Uh, mm-hmm. It says, so um, according to the wiki. They see him after Arthur gets <coughs> attacked. That's right. So Uth- Lucius Malfoy. Lucius. <laughs> he places Bode under, Bode, sorry, under the imperious curse to force him to attempt the same theft of whatever mm. he was trying to steal. I think the prophecy. The prophecy. <laughs> I haven't read this oh in a long God. time. <laughs> Even um, he shows unusual resistance to the Imperious Curse. Um, when Augustus Rookwood suggested may have been because Bode, being an unspeakable, knew what mm-hmm. it would happen mm-hmm. if he tried to remove one of the prophecies. The moment he touched mm-hmm. the orb, defensive spells around it were triggered, um, <clears throat> and he suffered spell damage that affected his mind, causing him to believe he was a teapot. He's a little teapot short stuff. <laughs> You are speaking <laughs> ill of the dead. I'm sorry. My niece just learned how to do that song. Um, so he goes to um, St. Mongo's, and while he's there, he gets attacked by someone sending him um, this, the plant. And a calendar. How nice. And that's how he dies. <laughs> I can't stand you this evening. <laughs> I'm and sorry. it makes me love you so much I'm more. I'm all over the place. But now I'm going to read from a book that a woman wrote. <laughs> 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 As the lift doors rattled open, <laughs> that's not rattling, but close enough, they sped up a corridor that was quite different from those above. The walls were bare. There were no windows and no doors apart from a plain black one set at the very end of a corridor. Harry expected them to go through it, not go under it, not go over it, but to go through it. But instead, Mr. Weasley seized him by the arm and dragged him to the lift to the left where there was an opening leading to a flight of steps. So I wonder, like, does that, does that call, like, does the prophecy call to him? Well, or is he remembering it from his dreams? I think he's remembering it from his dreams. Or both. I'm just thinking, like, I wonder if he's look, looking at him, like, unconsciously. It's he's the like, I need to walk through that dough. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Everything's the work. Rock. I think it's probably just he recently had a dream about it. So he was like, oh, I that looks funny. Dream. Oh, I mean, Voldemort was dreaming about it. Of times mm-hmm. gone by. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually thinking of the one from Tangled. So then they have to take the steps down because the lifts don't go down that far. And Arthur wonders again why they're going down there. 
first of all, what happens if they have someone that can't walk on steps that has to go down to the courtroom? That's a little serious question. I don't know. All right, so they um, have to go down the stairs. So they're running down the stairs. And at the bottom of them, they run, at the bottom of the steps that they've run down, there's another corridor which reminded Harry of the corridor that led to Snape's dungeon at Hogwarts. Mm. It was made of rough stone and had torches in brackets. Not in like hanging on the wall, not like brackets. Are there any <laughs> just ca- <laughs> signs? Are there any cats <laughs> hanging from them? Oh boy! No, there's just cats playing cats cradle. <laughs> <laughs> I was obsessed with cats cradle, but anyway, so many thumbs. <laughs> can Mrs. Norris do the cats cradle? Of course she can because she's a polydactyl and she can tie herself up on lights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> up on lights. You know who would know the answer to this would be Bonnie Wright. Because, I mean, she was there. (laughs) (laughs) She'd probably be like, I don't know. But it was a British accent. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Any hoosies. How many toes do they have? (laughs) Uh, Well, I'll tell you, Rookie has 27 toes now. I'm sorry. What? Rookie has like 27 toes. (laughs) He's got what do you mean now? Is he like continuously well, growing? Uh, them? No, we just discovered two more that we didn't know existed when we were cutting. We can't not. We can't talk about it. <laughs> this is like Why? Whole, it's so cool. It's like the whole bunny thing all over again. Gabrielle, I don't that's like awesome. It. Gabrielle's cat has seven toes on one paw. <laughs> Let's go back to Harry Potter and torches and brackets. Polydactyl cats are Harry Potter. <laughs> The doors along the corridor were heavy <laughs> wooden ones with iron bolts and keyholes. Whoa! Low <laughs> more of that. <laughs> they stop outside a grimy, dark door with an immense iron lock, and Arthur has to slump against it because he's like, you know, he has to catch his breath. He's literally clutching his side like there's a stitch in it. And he tells Harry he better go inside. And Harry's like, uh, you're not coming in? And he's like, no, bro. You got this. And he's like, no, I'm not allowed to go in. Um, <laughs> and he wishes Harry good luck. And then Harry's heart was beating a... This is just a quote from the book. Sort of. A violet. Give <laughs> 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 me violet. I had a purple tattoo on my heart. <laughs> I need you to be serious when you read this. <laughs> a violet tattoo. Against Harry's apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Violet. Mm. Harry's heart was beating a violent tattoo against his Harry's apple. I mean, Adam's apple. (laughs) He swallowed hard, turned the heavy iron door handle, and stepping inside the room. This is like the most serious moment in Harry's life so far. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot handle any of this. You guys will get, there's there's a friend quote in there. Ooh. Or friend's joke, I should say. Okay. Let's What's inside the door? Anyways, well, when we come back, we're gonna find out what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, like I enjoy that chapter a lot because that is a whole chapter of foreshadowing for the end of the book. And it's just cool to like see, you know, it's almost like seeing Hogwarts for the first time. You're learning all this stuff, and now yeah. with, with the Ministry, you get to see kind of some backstory of yeah. like. It's almost like a plain chapter because we're gearing up to something big, like this, yeah. right. gonna, like a big thing for him. So it's kind of like a fluff chapter, but you get a lot of information. Yeah. I feel like all her chapters are, there's always like some huge takeaway in them, even if it like isn't. It's just the takeaway. Isn't like something that's going to be meaningful at the moment. This is a big build up chapter. Yeah. I also like how we get to see the ministry for the first time ever. Yeah, that's really cool. Especially because, like, how many times it plays a role later on, you know? So it's like we're introduced to this new super important place. You know what I mean? Like, we're always (laughs) constantly hearing about the ministry. Lightning bolt round. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Gabrielle asks, how do you guys feel about the difference between these scenes in the movie and the book? I feel like it's the next chapter maybe more so uh, but this one, this like, one the, well this one i don't remember we don't movie. really well, okay see much of like the beginning of his day it's like he's just going to the ministry right. with arthur right real talk real talk from from tiffany i cannot stand 
the fifth movie. That's a lot of people's opinion. I literally can't stand it. So when somebody asks me to compare them, I can only usually pick out things that really made me mad. And the rest of the stuff. I don't remember because I haven't seen I've it forgotten. in years. Well, I love this movie because I separate them a lot. And that's the only way I can love this movie. Well, yeah. If, because, because there's a lot that's different and missing. Um, well, it is the biggest book. And the shortest movie. Makes sense, right? Yeah, for sure. David Yates. Tiffany just gave me a look like I was the one that made that decision. You did. I heard you calling the shots. He takes those scissors to... Guess what? To I'm not going to throw away my much. shot. Snippity, snip, snap, snip. Um, I, so so I, I like the movie purely on its own. But if you're making me compare them, I really don't like how they kind of complete... They cut out a lot about <clears throat> headquarters. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's very minimal... At headquarters, like we don't really get to see them cleaning it up that much. Mm-hmm. We don't get to see um, like this little breakfast interaction in the morning. Uh, it's really just like, oh, he's there. We see creature for a sec, only because Joe was like, "You better put him in." Yeah, sh- there was, uh, and it well, was like, who posted that? Where do I just read that? Somebody Someone was in the th- group so post- they tried to cut creature out of this, and she's yeah. like, "I'm just saying, but I'm not saying that you're gonna need him in there." So like, yeah, all right, we'll add him back in for one second. Why in the world, if an author of a fantastically um, successful book series that you're turning into a movie says that this writes this character, and you that clearly is talked about throughout a lot of this book, and then you're gonna cut it out of the movie? I think it's because they just didn't want to do the CGI on him. Guess how much I care. I know I don't at all. <laughs> I I but I think that it's really it's really difficult when you start comparing. It's just like it just gets frustrating. And so I think that's that what oranges. Yeah. Don't no. We're all fruit here. <laughs> I just I just think that like, and we didn't really. I mean, like we saw the ministry, but we didn't see the ministry. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like how they did it was so rushed. We didn't see like the security booth with the little wand wear, and we didn't see Arthur's office. It was. I feel like this really truly is a huge jump from like people that have never read the books and have only watched the movies. Like even when they're listening to us, like there's so much cut out. Yeah. yeah. Um. This, it's like a world they, of it's difference. literally surface level in the movie. If yeah. it's like that. it's like oh he's at Grimald Place. Oh he has a trial to go to. Oh we're in the ministry. There's Dumbledore. It's over. He's fine. Like it's so yeah. fast. It takes place in like thirty seconds, and this is like five chapters. Yeah, and even like my biggest gripe, I would say, is like the whole Marauders thing. Like oh for sure, I was looking like, and I mm-hmm. I knew going in that from jump that these books were not going to be the same watching the movie. Like I knew that going in, yeah. but in my mind, I'm like, they can't, they're not going to cut like all of this stuff out. Like how I was so excited to see how they were going to do it. Yep. I was so, so disappointed in it. Yep. Cause this is my favorite book. Um, and probably my least favorite movie. Mm. That's hard. My least favorite movie is Goblet. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Goblet. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. Isaiah asks, would you attempt wandless magic if your wand got snapped? Yeah. Heck yes. I would also, have to, I would have to. I would um, not if a cop was asking me that. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> would you attempt wandless magic? Yeah. We all know the answer. Am I going to be yeah. like, even if my wand wasn't snapped, I'm going to snap you with my wandless magic. <laughs> I'll Sarah's snap my accurate. own wand and then I'll show you I can do wandless <laughs> magic. <laughs> Vinny says... Sort Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, <laughs> Puss in Boots, and the Gingerbread Man. Oh my God! Donkey is a Hufflepuff. Yeah, yeah. Shrek. Shrek's a. Grip. I think he's a Hufflepuff. Ooh. Yeah, I think I agree. Mm. I, I think Fiona's a Gryffindor. Wait, wait. wait. Is I think Shrek he's Scottish. <laughs> I don't know. He, he at least he? has a Scottish accent. He's acting on the Horcrux. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Puss in Boots, Slytherin. Gingy. I would say Fiona man. could be a, a Ravenclaw. A Ravenclaw yeah. or Gryffindor. Yeah. Gingerbread man. Mm, mm, I don't know. Gryffindor. Okay. Gingerbread man? Yeah. I guess he's being a puff. 
He's a brave little dude. What about dragon? Not the Hufflepuffs aren't brave. The dragon? Puff. Dragon. Puff. Ooh. Puff. Oh, donkey and the dragon. I know. <laughs> and their babies. They're I haven't also seen that Shrek movie being a raven so claw. long. Think about how he gets to her in the tower when all those other dudes couldn't. That's true. It's unconventional. I cannot believe that Shrek is Scottish. Are you out of your it's mind? It's literally been out for many a Like, my grandfather was still alive when Shrek came Why out. And we're having this chair, conversation. Have a seat. Draw yourself a chair. <laughs> <laughs> my wand is at home. Wandless magic, bro. Uh, Gabrielle asks, what would you do if you actually got expelled from Hogwarts? And if you did, what would you want it to be for? I would cry my eyes out. Yeah, I would sob. What was the, the question? Corner. Better be for something good. What if would I got you expelled? Do? I would what cry. would you do? You actually Sarah got expelled. Sarah just drew me a chair in her notebook. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> I need a new shirt design of a witch or wizard doing drawing this and drawing a chair with her wand. Um, yeah, I would cry. Mm-hmm. And then I guess if I'm going to get expelled, I would want to go out with a bang or something but i'd want it to be like the the weasley twins like yeah. throwing fireworks if i'm being a thousand percent honest the reason why i would get kicked out of school even though i'm an intelligent person would be failing because i didn't do my homework oh my god <laughs> and i'd be like peace going on to uh, well i probably would cry but and have a panic <laughs> attack but bye grades not great <clears throat> do your homework stay in school Allie asks, do you think Mr. Weasley went the muggle way to the ministry? Not to make Harry look good, but because he wanted an excuse for Harry to escort him through the muggle world. <laughs> no, I, I mean... I think part I, of it was for Harry's I security. like that, but... Um, yeah. Well, they said they didn't want him drawing any kind of attention to himself. Mm-hmm. And if he used side along apparition, it would have been... Like uh, maybe Fudge would have been like, oh, you just think you, you, know, you can apparate here now? Or... But I do think that Mr. Weasley potentially volunteered to have the excuse to do the muggle things. Because, like, technically (laughs) Molly could have taken him. Like, it didn't have to be somebody in the ministry. It could have been anybody. Yeah. It also just makes sense, though, for Arthur to take him. For sure. It's a cute outlook on Arthur. Ethan said, did Dumbly just use the statue in his fight with Voldemort as, as an excuse oh, to destroy it? Partially. I probably. could see that being an underlying tone. Very mm-hmm. convenient. I'll yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda asked, did Dumbledore... Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Said, just... Same question. Oh, same question. Wow. Um, Kayla. Kayla? I always Kayla. get confused on your name, and I'm sorry. Kayla. I apologize. I it's the nature of us. How impressed would Arthur Weasley be with the muggle use of magic erasers? <laughs> oh my gosh. Mr. Dude, Clay, it would blow his mind. mind. It would blow his what mind. What if a what if they're magic because a wizard invented Created them? them? Whoa. Oh. And now they're like, haha, look at me now, my I rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that helps the muggles. Even asks, what's the secret order handshake? We can't tell you it's a secret. Yeah, gosh. And then Mia asks, is there a secret Swisher handshake? We can't tell you. It's a secret. And then Nikki says, if there is, will you do a video so we can learn it? <laughs> it's a secret. My sorority has a secret handshake. Teach That's it to me. No, you're not in it. Yes, I, I am. You're not in it. You're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Gabrielle, how do you think Molly's meatballs taste? Delicious. Like meatballs? Delicious, because anything that Molly touches food-wise has to be so good. <laughs> uh, Maui Potter... <laughs> Considering Mr. Weasley's love for muggles, we can p- probably assume he took a lot of muggle studies classes. Why is it he seems to be so baffled of electricity, rubble du- rubber ducks, etc.? Let's be real. Electricity is crazy cool. I'm it baffled is. by it. It's not that baffling if you like read about Did it. Did you invent it, Sarah? I didn't no. invent it, but I've learned about Keys it. Keys on kites, man. Keys, Keys on, on kites. kites. Keys on kites. <laughs> Well, man, he's on guys. He's on guys, man. Uh, Gabriel. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> you deleted it. If Where'd Mr. It Weasley, he's he's so into muggles, he probably yeah. took muggle studies classes. So yeah. why is he so baffled still about a lot of muggle things? Maybe but they didn't oh. offer those classes when he was going to Hogwarts, you know? Ooh, that's Maybe. interesting. Because, I mean, like, if you think... It, it's progressive. Like, if I... Yeah. Yeah. Like if I think if I think about like classes that are offered at my high school now, like they offer so many more languages for you to take now and um there are like a ton of other 
They have like graphic design classes. Why wasn't that a thing whenever I went there? My school, like my last couple years, started teaching Chinese, which I thought was pretty cool. I think they have a Chinese teacher at our high school too. Do you know what's funny? I did an industrial tech class at my middle school where um, a friend and I recorded a radio show. And here I am. Hey. Gabrielle asks, if auras are like the FBI, do you think they're, do you think, hold on. Go for it. If auras are like the FBI, Mm -hmm. do you think, or is there any mention of a cop type role in the ministry? There is. That was the law enforcement. Yeah, that's the law enforcement. Yeah. Yes. Isaiah, how would you deal with being expelled from Hogwarts and having your wand snapped? Would you integrate into the muggle world? I would be an outlaw. I'd be squibs for life, man. I would be a squib and I would like just make sure to marry into magic. Wait, what was the question? Like, what would you, how would you handle getting expelled and having your wand snapped? Like, would you you reacclimate into muggle life? We have to remember that. What's his face was expelled from Hogwarts and he's allowed to do magic all over the world. New command. Yeah. Yes, I, I think that it depends on what you do if your wand gets snapped. I think like Harry is getting his because it was like, oh, you like broke the statute of secrecy. Like that's a big deal, you know? Yeah. After you had already been warned. Right. Plus Fudge doesn't like him no more. No more. No more. All right, last lightning bolt round question, unless any of us have any. Patia asks if you worked at the ministry, era of Hermione as minister of magic what job would you want i, I would want an assistant i'm really good at that i would want to work in the aura office with harry yeah I'd, that'd be epically cool or i'd want to work in the um the magical beast division because i'd want to set things right and not just destroy all the beasts because they're beasts you know what i'm saying the beasts yeah you guys have any lightning bolt round questions or am I moving on to the fan story? Um, I don't. If you could visit a level, what would you, what level would you visit? Level mm-hmm. two. What's level the two? Don't just throw numbers at me, Katie. I'm not. That's where they end up. That's where all the cool law enforcement <laughs> is. That's where the auras are. I would want to go to the level <laughs> with the magical creatures. The beast wing. I'd like to go to the food level, wherever the cafeteria is. <gasps> yeah, where is the cafeteria? <laughs> what oh, good level? Call. Yeah. What kind of food is there? What level? Magical food. Department of snacking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best department. Department of food. Department of lunchtime. <laughs> the department of nourishment. I want them to All be right. like... Do you think Eric Sh- Munch should work <laughs> in the... <laughs> yes! <laughs> the snack department. <laughs> Munching on some munchies. His is wife, that his Mrs. favorite? Munch, works is that, there. Is that his favorite chip? Is it munchies the or munchies. munchos? It's munchies. It's munchies. <laughs> he, he, his wife, um, Rebecca Munch, she... Um, <laughs> I bought a munch. <laughs> Rebecca? She... What? I her a shift munch. is always lunchtime, so Rebecca Munch serving lunch. <laughs> My new favorite character is Eric Munch. <laughs> fan story. I wonder if he survives. Are you... Does he become a good guy or a bad guy? I don't know. Good guy. I say you, let's, he did. Let's look him up. <laughs> Eric Munch, who was employed as the watch wizard at the British Ministry of Magic, he was poorly shaven and wore peacock blue robes when on duty. That's it? That's all <laughs> no, there's got? a whole... There's actually a whole thing on him. Oh, really? Not a whole thing. It says, um, Munch... Oh, that's spelled wrong. Munch, it says much, was working for the British World... Nope, British Ministry of Magic during the day. He sat at the security British desk... British World! ...the left side <laughs> of the atrium, checking visitors with a probity probe and registering their wands before giving them clearance to enter. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, he apparently also worked on night shift occasion. on occasion. He was caught by Sturgis Podmore trying to break into the Department of Mysteries on... At one o'clock in the morning <gasps> on August thirty first, is he a bad dude? Nineteen ninety five, and arrested him on charges of trespass and attempted robbery. He was trying to grab a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Munch a bad dude. <laughs> it says sometime in the nineteen ten. Nope, it says twenty ten. Oh my god, you're gonna be all right. Uh, Munch had to be rescued from the Department of Mysteries brain room by the more recently hired Grim Fowley. I don't know what that if that's true. That's from Wizards Unite. The other part was from <laughs> Order of the Phoenix. So that's interesting. Oh, Eric. 
Oh, Eric. Oh, Eric. Says, Eric. Munch was featured oh, on a conceptual oh, art for the film adaptation. <laughs> You're seeing Oh, Eric. <laughs> 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 and it's sad that I know that because I know that song by like heart. Um, what so he are was. You gonna munch on? <laughs> Sorry. He was featured on conceptual art for the film adaptation of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. He was not, however, featured in the film. Hmm. Was he casted? Probably not. Interesting, interesting. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Read cool. me a fan story. All right. Today's fan story comes from Megan Alstott. Good name, spelled correctly. Oh Thank you. God. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, ladies. My name is Megan. I'm 21 years old, and I'm a Ravenclaw. Hi, woo, woo, woo. Or a Slitherclaw, to be woo, exact. Woo, woo, woo. I started listening to you guys about nine months ago. I was tired of listening to music or YouTube while at the gym. I'm a runner and was interested in trying out podcasts. Swish and Flick was the first podcast I really stuck with, and you guys have helped me in so many ways. Nice. When I started listening to you guys, I really needed an escape. I was in a two-year-long abusive relationship with a man that I couldn't bring myself to leave because mm. I was too scared. Going to the gym was already a nice oasis for me, but listening to you guys was always the best part of my day. You all provided me with an escape from the abuse and the yelling and the hitting. Mm. Not only that, but listening to you guys have such a great time and share so many fun stories, it gave me the confidence to finally leave him. Yes. In January of this year, I got my own place and started going back to school. I'm mm-hmm. currently majoring in psychology with a Bachelor of Arts and a focus in neuropsychology. You ladies mean more to me than you could ever know. I don't have many close friends, but I consider you ladies to be some of my best. I still always listen to you when I'm at the gym or driving to work or grocery shopping. And I know that when I put my headphones down, the world around me is no longer one of pain thanks to you guys. I love you all. Don't let the muggles get you down. That's so sweet. Yeah. Thank you so much for your story. And, you know, we're so happy that that you're now um, you're safe and you're you're doing amazing things with your life. And it's awesome that we get to be um, friends with you. We are yeah. some of your best. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You're doing amazing things. So keep keep going. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's and incredible. thank you for finding the courage within yourself mm-hmm. to leave the relationship, because that's really hard. I mean, I. I've never experienced it, but just like based on other people that have talked about it, Mm -hmm. I can imagine that it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for the courage of having to tell us, you know what I mean? That's also difficult. So you're amazing. You're a rock star. Yes. Go Megan. Go Megan. You're awesome. You it might be your birthday. Name. You got a good name. It might be your mm-hmm. birthday. It might be your birthday. <laughs> if it's not, still party. Still party. <laughs> and good luck in school. Yeah. yeah. Celebrate your unbirthday every day like Alice does. Yeah. yeah. And if you are someone who is experiencing um, any kind of domestic abuse, there is a number that you can call that is in over 200 different languages. All calls are free and confidential. And that number is one 800 Seven nine nine seven two three three, one eight hundred seven nine nine safe. Nice. No shame in asking for help. No, not at all. Um, so you can find us on social media. You can. Yeah, you can. We're on Facebook <laughs> at Swish and Flick Podcast. <gasps> And we also have our Facebook group called Swish and Flick Podcast Group, which is super active, super awesome. I love it. Everybody that's in there is the bomb we're all family honestly all fam. we mm-hmm. are family. Um, i believe that everybody calls it a swish fam i got swish all fam. my swishes and me yeah oh that was so cute that's not the first time she's done that uh, but i really i really liked it <laughs> oh. i appreciate the enthusiasm. everything's new today <laughs> shrek is scottish yeah. cheers. he's scottish <laughs> eric <laughs> munch loves lunch <laughs> and brunch <laughs> a whole bunch <laughs> Just a hunch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. It's like the new lettuce roll joke. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, Speaking of lettuce, I hope that all of our Phoenix Plus patrons enjoy their packages that are coming their way. (laughs) Hello. Spoiler alert. There's nothing crunchy in it. (laughs) Okay. From Eric (laughs) Munch. But you might want to remain calm before you open that box. Correct, Mundo. Um, it's gonna rocket you out of this world. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can also find us. I keep saying so now instead of all right. So I've dropped the all right, and now I just say so. Just well, keep going. You're just not gonna say anything. Baby Maybe. steps, man. 
You can find us on Instagram. <laughs> that you're going to do it again. <laughs> Swish Flick Cast and on Twitter also at Swish Flick Cast. Um, and then you can also support us on Patreon if you are so inclined at patreon.com forward slash Swish Flick Cast. We are able to go to LeakyCon because of Patreon. We are able to keep our website up and running, keep the offer you guys going. merch. Yeah. Keep the podcast up on Podbean because that's not free either. Like host it for everybody to be able to listen to all the episodes. Yep. Um, so we really appreciate everything because we get to make this podcast as fun and awesome as it is because of you. Absolutely. Because of you, we can run a podcast. <laughs> because <laughs> of you. I talk also, into this mic on my phone. <laughs> all of that information because of you. <laughs> is found on our website, swishflickcast.com. Yes. It's dot net. <laughs> <laughs> dot com. <laughs> swishflickcast.net. It's dot com. Swishflickcast.net. All right. It's dot com. How many times? Switch flick. No. <laughs> I'm going to come across this table. Tiffany. Dot Tiffany. Gov. What are you doing, Tiffany? So as of this recording, uh, I survived the Valentine's Day party in first grade. It was rough. <laughs> I saw the um, the video. You Did you see that kid story? just like cruise across? <laughs> I was dying. I didn't know he was going to do that. And it just happened. He like scuttled across sideways like a crap. You were <laughs> just like, help me <laughs> or pray for me. Dude, today was a long day, but I'm glad they had fun. You ever see a kid drop it low to baby shark? Because I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what blows my mind is your kid can now do like she does all the hand motions. Oh, I know. She's crazy smart. Yeah. Um still lifting. Doing all that. I've been doing the dishes every day, so that's cool. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we come over not. and do mine. <laughs> I have no spoons left, no bowls left. Honestly, but you know what? It makes me feel really good when they're done. Yeah, I love I doing it. And I like this. getting up early in the morning and dishes. seeing a clean countertop. Like that oh brings God. me joy. Yeah. Like I just know. thinking it's about little it. Little things. It just thinking about it puts a smile like, on my face. You know what I'm saying? I've Lots been thinking of about how I just need to get rid of everything because if I don't have anything, then there's nothing there to get messy. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. What was I going to say? You oh, love dishes. but honestly, like we talk about the things that we're like doing and whatever. And it's like, yeah, I'm working. That's one thing. But like doing this podcast, like that's what I'm doing. Like creating the docs and like I've been diving into a creature's character hardcore over the past like week. By the time this is out, that Felix Files will be out. And I... I don't know that I've been more excited for a character profile than I wow. am right now. I was so excited for Tonks. So Creature's going to have a lot to beat. I don't even remember us recording Tonks. Oh, it was so good. It was, it was such a good one. It was so good. You, you and I were here and it was remote, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, because we had to do it late because I got my hair done that day. That's great. Wow. <laughs> see where her priorities lie. On her head. No, but um, but yeah, do, doing this podcast. I mean, that's what I've been up to, and I love connecting with people on Twitter. That's been awesome. So you can follow me at Tiff Swish underscore Flick, and I'm really, really going to stra- try and start Pokemon Shield that I got <gasps> for Christmas. Oh, we need we to have start sword, that too. and I we haven't touched it. What's a Pokemon? Get uh, out! A Pikachu. Is that a type, is that a type of sushi? Catch em all. A Pikachu, I guess. Magikarp like probably is. <laughs> a Sarah is Magikarp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be that fish thing. Dude, Magikarp turns into Gyarados. I mean, Gyarados. She is ain't real. no Gyarados. That's Bob's yet. apron. She ain't no Gyarados yet. I like Jigglypuff because she likes to put people to sleep. <laughs> and then she draws on their faces. <laughs> it's <true>. Sounds great. <laughs> it's true. There's a there's a small chapter book that I've read to my class where Jigglypuff takes down a whole bl- like uh, blimp that they're flying. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> they start to hear Jigglypuff sing, and Team Rocket's like, "Oh my god!" And they like jump out of the pool. <laughs> Anyways, Rocket. you know, having fun. I'm having a good time. We were just in New York. And I was like, "You were?" Yeah. So were you on our little uh, ski trip? And 
guys i'm getting that tattoo soon whoop, whoop, whoop. you gotta do it at a time that we could be there with you yeah I'm getting it oh. soon well not when we're in dallas <laughs> <laughs> no not when you're in dallas all right go we're going to dallas <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm so excited to meet Rupert Grant. I mean, even if I, like, missed out on tickets, which <laughs> I will do everything in my power to make sure I do not miss out on tickets oh to, God. like, get an autograph and get a picture. But even if I could just, like, stare at him in person, that'd be great. Can I just stare at you? <laughs> Can I just stare at you? You know you have um, stared at him in person. I know, but it was so far away. It was, but I'm just he saying. Was at, he was at the celebration of Harry Potter, like, we the second last year that it did. We just was. missed him in the expo. Remember that? He yeah, was in there right before we went in there. At Mina Lima's booth. <sighs> okay, anyway. Um, I'm reading more, which is fun, because I kind of, like, made this vow to myself for 2020 to expand my my reading horizons instead of just reading Harry Potter over and over again. Not that there's anything wrong with that, Mm -hmm. but I just feel like there's so much good literature out there and I love reading and like, it's just such a, it's such a nice feeling to get lost in a book. Um, and I just finished his dark materials, the golden compass. It was good, but I will say it took me a long time to get into it. I don't know if I talked about this on the last episode, but, um, it was it was really good, but it did take me a lot to get into it. Um, but once I was invested, it was kind of one where, like, I just wanted to keep reading to finish it. Um, but now I'm reading Little Women, because believe it or not, Little I have women. never read Little Women. <laughs> you do that every <laughs> so, time. Um, um, <laughs> but it's really good. And it was like, I was reading it in the first chapter. I'm like, wow, this is like exactly like the the recent movie that came out. It was like really good like word for almost word for word for the first chapter which was which was neat um, oh the book uh, the movie yeah and i've never saw any of the movies never read the book but i know casting a bunch someone dies yes they do yeah um <laughs> yeah Little oh women. my gosh i just watched sword in the stone for the first time i can't I'm believe i'm sorry I, what? what i know okay so i had this memory in my mind that i had seen sword in the stone i was convinced i was like no i've totally seen that movie like i know that i have i know who merlin is i knew who the owl was but i didn't know his name but i like had memories of like seeing the owl before and i was like of course i know arthur you know then we watched it and i was like i have I've never seen this before. You sickened me. It's so good. It's, I thought I, I had me. never seen it, and I had seen it so except it was kind for of the funny, last scene. Like, like mm. flip flopped, but I was I was watching it, and I was like, "How how did I never like this movie is so good. It's so it good. is so we, we good. just watched it. Yeah. We watched it, in and New like York. Ugh, yeah. Merlin is the bomb. Dot com. And I said this on Grown Up Kids, but I was like, Merlin might be. Like my favorite character next to Pooh Bear. Like I cannot believe that I didn't know Pooh Bear. I didn't know this story. Pooh Bear. It was so cute. It was so funny. It was so good. It had such a good message. Like mm-hmm. I just I loved it. That the my one of my favorite quotes is from Arthur, and he says, "Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's bad." And I was like, oh, "You go, Arthur." Good quote. Good quote. Such a good movie. I grew up so, watching that. I know. I can't. And then I asked my mom. I was like, Mom, why did you never have me watch The Sword in the Stone? And she's like, well, I just like had you watch the princess movies. And I'm like, oh, for shame. For shame. Not saying it's strictly a boy movie, but, but back that's in what the she 90s. Called it. No, right. no, but like because I had grew up with brothers. So like yeah. we, they didn't always want to watch the princess movies because like even now that's not stuff my brothers are super into. Right. Um. So we watched, like, I've, I watched a lot of Disney. We watched Winnie. We watched Sword of the Stone was a big one because we all loved that, like, um, I almost said Lord of the Rings. We did watch that. Um, not when in Arthur. the 90s. But, like, King, yeah, King Arthur. We watched um, Lion King, stuff like that. Yeah, I was I was so surprised. And she's like, well, I don't know. I just never had you watch it. You were really into Cinderella and The Little Mermaid. And I'm like, I mean, I get that. Yeah, we watched but The Little Mermaid so, so much. We broke the VHS tape. I was obsessed with the Little Mermaid TV show. Do you Mm, remember that? mm -mm. Mm -mm. I loved it because it focused on like her and her sisters. Oh, I feel like I I do, but I never watched it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, podcasting a lot, having fun. Life is good. Katie's not been doing the dishes. I'm honestly just glad that I 
woke up she not surviving. feeling horrible today. Oh, she was like in rough I shape the past two days, ya. guys. She actually didn't go to work. And I feel like it takes a lot for Katie to decide to not go to work. Yeah. For t- especially two days in a row. Like, it was just yeah. not going to happen. Well, like, uh, last I called week, off. Yeah. I was out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's going I around. never call off work specifically when I'm ill. Um, and so, like, I was at work all day, like, and I felt awful. I was sitting with a patient, and I was coughing. Um, and I, like, go through all of my cough drops and, like, all this stuff. And the nurse that I had, I've known my entire time of working there. So I've known her for 10 years. And she's like, Sarah, because I was telling her, I'm like, yeah, my mom thinks I have this. And like, I don't know. She's like, why don't you just go to the urgent care? Like after work, she's like, and that's what kind of my mom was telling me. And I'm like, yeah, I'll probably just call off tomorrow. Because she's like, you don't sound great. And she goes, as the day goes on, she goes, you're not sounding great. And then I did. And it gave me an antibiotic and it didn't do anything. Cause I don't think that's what I had. <laughs> Feeling okay, better, doctor. <laughs> well, then I did have my NP aunt tell me what to do. But go on, Katie. It's about you. No, I'm just glad that I feel better. I know I, I probably that. don't sound better, but I feel 100% I mean, better than I mean, she was, like, I... out on the couch sleeping all day. Yeah. yeah. And then just laying there, just, like... I mean, I got to the point where you feel so... Like, you're tired of feeling sick. You just, like, want to cry. Yeah. And it oh, hadn't yeah. even been yeah. that long. Yeah. No, yeah. that was me. Yeah. yeah. It was not I, fun. I had raging fevers from Tuesday to Saturday in the middle of the night. Jeez. Tuesday to Saturday. Yeah. It was time. so That's bad. Rough. It, it hurt my muscles so bad I needed to use a heating pad on my back. That's how bad my fevers were. Yeah, that's insane. Dude, yeah. that's insane. I'm I think glad I really you're better. had yeah, thanks. major you fevers too. for two days. So I had a fever that Monday, and I didn't, and I had a feeling, and I have been almost sick for like a month, <laughs> which is not funny. It's just sad, and I'm over it. So hopefully this is like the end of it. But At like least I had you a fever sound better Monday. now. You're finally you starting to yeah, sound better. better. So, like, I had a fever on Monday. It was 102, and I have a low temp, so that's a big fever for me. And then that Tuesday, I was supposed to work, but I took it off because I had a funeral to go to. So, all day long, I'm taking, like, Tylenol, cold, and sinus, and all this stuff. And um, acetaminophen makes your – should make your fever go down. And on that, I was 101.8 at one point. Well, Marty told me that <sighs> Tylenol is only supposed to make your fever go down up two degrees. But your temperature should go down up two degrees. It's better than nothing. So I, I know, know but I'm rough. just saying, like. And then my cough didn't start until that after, like that Thursday, Friday, and then I still have that. I had a, but cough. I think I have a sinus infection. Was my aunt oh. told me. I had a cough all weekend, but felt fine. And then all of a sudden, I woke up on Tuesday and was like, "Nope, yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. happening." I quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's but just, anyway, it's just rough. What, what else, else going on? Yeah, <laughs> I'm s- finally feeling like a normal human being. Isn't it great? Ish. I still have a little bit of a cough, and it sounds bad, but like I think it's just a sinus infection. Um, and well, I don't know. I'm getting over it. Who knows? Or I could be dying. I have the malaflua. Isn't that what we called it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm just, dude, this That's is gonna be a rough <laughs> patch of episodes for future listeners yeah, to get sorry. through. My God. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, school's going on uh and work and then traveling but that's about it traveling Tra- did we traveling. say that we're going to dallas <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're going to dallas in march tomorrow not tomorrow saturday we're going tomorrow <laughs> i will tell you i did make a purchase today i bought some wine glasses that i had my eye on for probably over a year that were pink and i was so excited because i like realized because they're from world market and there was one by my house and it closed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should have gone there then because everything was on sale and bought the wine glasses. Like, I didn't think about it until it was like closed. And I was like so sad. So I was telling, texting my friend, I'm like, I'm going to go today. I'm like, I'm going to go look to see if they have them because there's another world market on my way to school. And so I'm like, after school, I'm going to go to world market and I'm going to buy these wine glasses. And then it was like fate because then they sent me a coupon for 20% off. Hey. So I'm walking into the store and I'm texting my friend, Jen. And I'm like, Jen, should I get eight wine glasses or 12? And then I walk in and they only had eight. So I'm like, I'm getting eight. <laughs> so I bought eight wine glasses and eight champagne flutes that are in this pink color. That's cute. I l- and I got 20% off. So I got about 20 bucks off. I was so excited. I literally squealed when I got in the car. And then I washed them and I scrubbed the sticker off the bottom because, you know, you got to take the price tag off and I'm going to use them. My friends are coming over. I'm going to make brunch. I'm just very excited to use it. I really want to put some wine in it today, but I was like, no, no. Got to save it for Saturday. You're a goofball. I'm so excited. I'm excited. Wine glasses. 
at Halloween. That's when you know your favorite color is pink. When you're like, pink wine glasses? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, is that it? I think so. Yeah, that's it. What a whirlwind. We started so <laughs> heated and then just got absolutely bananas. <laughs> oh, guys, thanks for listening to this insanely crazy, ridiculous episode. Yep. Yeah. It went a lot of places. Thank you for traveling with us. Uh, never pack light because you never know what you're in for. And that concludes or this week's. Nope. Gosh, use darn it. bag. There oh, you go. Yeah, good idea. That, that, that get, was, that get was a good beaded, idea, Tiffany. Get a beaded bag. It's never a good idea to interrupt me. Yeah. Oh, always. Ooh. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Until the very end. Detecting high level sass. <laughs> <laughs> I lifted a lot of weights today. All right. Too swole. I lift Small. people for a living, so let's go. You also do other things. Yeah, mostly lift people. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Oh my gosh! Lift All right, people and so pack light if you want. Use Hermione's bag. <laughs> At any rate, bring the things you need, and that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. <gasps> Amazing! Just in my voice. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? They're all going to laugh at me. (laughs) (laughs) Tiffany. I'm ready. Tiffany. A bunch of munches. (laughs) 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 Him and his whole family works there. (laughs) (laughs) The whole munch family. (laughs) The whole bunch of them. (laughs) Meg, space. why don't you just open the snack oh, instead I, I, of open right, it open so it. One, slow? Two, three, right what? Open it. Open it. We can hear you. <laughs> <laughs>